vote outside of my matches that I've participated in myself. I haven't had a great opportunity to see a lot of these matches, but thankfully we're both here for this one. And we are underway with this match. So I guess for anybody who might be watching and doesn't know what darker side means or what it is, um, there's a, I guess like bonus kingdom that you unlock in this game once you beat the main story um, for collecting 500 uh, unique moons or 500 moons in general. And it's called the darker side of the moon. And it's kind of like the final challenge level of this game. If you're familiar with Mario Galaxy, it's like the perfect run in that game. So what they're going to be doing is from a new five, collecting 500 moons and beating that darker side level. Yes, and timing ends as soon as you make contact with the multi-moon. So yes. pretty much as soon as the is considered over. So it's like a three and a half hour long category on average. Uh, these guys are pretty good, so I would expect it to probably take less than three and a half for both of them. Yeah. Even in a no reset setting. Actually, uh, pull up the PBs in particular. Yeah, I don't know the exact seconds, but they do both have 323s. Yeah, 32342 for Neo and a 32357 for Dangers. So, yeah, very close. Not even. Oh, wait, no, yeah. I think. Yeah, no, exactly 15 seconds, actually. Team Jer's going for the hot left side cap. Now, do, I don't know, do you do this? Actually, they're both going for it. I find it really awkward to do with grabbing the checkpoint and still moving the way I need to move to get a proper left side. Uh, I I do do this, and I feel like ever, every time I go back to any percent after having to do it this way, it's just, it feels so much easier. Uh, in any percent, I mean. Yeah, because it, it's something that doesn't look all that different, just because all you have to do is throw your cap at the checkpoint to grab it. And that checkpoint... It's going to be important for later. That's why they grab it now. It's going to save them a lot of time on a revisit to Cat Kingdom. But I don't know. Hey, something did... about the angle you throw your cap at just like kind of, to me, throws off the the way you need to backflip to get over to, to do left side properly. So I, I honestly, I just don't mess with it. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't save all that much time. I think it saves even less time in this category just because you're already kind of slightly going out to the right. Right. Yeah, I think it's it's like probably two seconds or less, even optimally, that you're saving by doing that. So it changes off to the hot lead going into Cascade. And, oh, okay, so here's something that we can talk about. Uh, Neo's on 1.0, and he's going to go for FMS here. And normally in like an any percent race, if we had people on different versions of the game, um, we would ban this because it would offer too much of an advantage for the 1.0 runner. But since there's a lot more going on in Darker Side, plus uh, I think Dangerous is on digital version of the game. Yes, he is. Which, which will save time on loads. And since Darker Side is a much longer category, there are more loads than in any percent run. So we don't know exactly how much time the loads save, but we estimate somewhere around 40 seconds throughout the course of this run. So between that and just like, other little things that Neo can do on 1.0 to save time kind of balance each other out. It's not exact, but we kind of just say anything goes in Darker Side because it is a long category, and even if Neo has like a five second advantage or something due to tricks, it's, it's probably not going to determine the outcome of the race. So, yeah, we just kind of say anything goes. So, Neo going for FMS there, we might see him with a Sphinx clip in Sand Kingdom. These things oh. all save, they save time, but they save less time than they do in any percent. Yeah, and obviously, as you say, because of the digital loads, they're actually like, it does pseudo balance itself out. Yeah, like I said, it's not exact, but it almost balances out pretty evenly. So it's, it's pretty fair to just kind of go for everything. I actually would really like to see uh, Neo do things. I would assume he will go for it. Yeah, um, I think he will as well. So I haven't actually seen... I, I haven't actually caught anyone on 1.0 doing Darker Side recently. I mean, the last person who was running it was Nitro. Yeah, I think uh, Neo and Nitro are like the two notable ones that run this category on 1.0. Um, I suppose Bayleaf does from time to time. 
Yeah, I think most of the action in this category is on 1.2. Yeah, that would be because no frog skip uh, would be the more competitive category. Or yes. subcategory for Dark Side, I should say. And that is the category we are running for this tournament. Um, there is a, there's a skip that you can do to kind of avoid doing the entire final level, which in a lot of people's eyes kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing the speedrun. You get to the thing that you're trying to unlock and then you just skip it. So we're not doing that in this tournament. Uh, we're going to make for the exciting finishes actually having to do the darker side level. Yeah, I think my analogy for frog skip is essentially baking the cake and then throwing it away. It's like baking the cake, but then not putting any frosting on it. You know, and basically just not enjoying it, eating it, and just, just leaving kind of leaving there. it on display until it goes stale. <laughs> a nice centerpiece on your kitchen table, but you never eat it. That would just be a shame. So. Uh, oh, even after the FMS and everything. Yeah. So, yeah, Neo actually pulled ahead there because of FMS, but later on that will balance itself out over, over the course of time. It won't be, like, very apparent where Dangerous will take a big lead anywhere in any specific section. It'll just kind of balance itself out throughout the whole run. So... Sand Kingdom is the kind of the first thing. In any speedrun of Odyssey, like, Cap and Cascade are pretty much always the same. No matter what category you're doing, for the most part. But this is where things will start to differentiate from an any percent run, if that's all you're familiar with. Having a bit of trouble with the uh, bird. Didn't fall off, though, fortunately. That would have been... Uh, that would have taken up quite a bit of time. Yeah, if you, also, hit the bird, if you hit the bird much earlier than that, it, the moon will just kind of be hanging off the edge of the rooftops there, and if you miss it, you'll just fall down to the ground, and that'll be even more annoying to back up. Also, one thing that wasn't uh, mentioned as they uh, came into the plaza, they did plant a seed, which uh, is for the revisit that happens in this category later on, as it takes, I think it's 18 minutes in real time, something like that? It's around 20 minutes. Yeah, I always just say roughly time. 20 minutes. I, there's some exact value that I don't know what it is. But... Which, obviously, if we were only here once, that's way too long, but since we'll be coming back after the game is over, or the main game is over, it's a free moon. Basically. Yeah, so almost almost every kingdom gets a revisit in this category. Um, the only exceptions being the very small ones, like Cloud Kingdom and Ruin Kingdom. Those you'll just go to the one time. But there's a lot of stuff on the first visits that serves as setup for later on. So, like grabbing that checkpoint and cap, um, obviously, you don't use it the first visit, it's for later. Planting, any time you see them planting a seed, they'll collect it later. Um, checkpoints in general, there's a lot that you grab first visit and don't use till second visit. I was gonna say, uh, noted that Neo did not actually do the Sphinx Whip there. Yeah, uh, so that, that's, again, that's a thing that, like, it's, what does it save in any percent? Like, uh, 10 seconds or something in that ballpark? I don't think it's that, I don't think it's, is it that drastic? I think it's somewhere from like 7 to 10. I don't know exactly. But it, it saves slightly less time in darker size, so it's definitely not like a super crucial thing to get, that you need to go for. Alright, so this is another difference between 1.0 and 1.2. The 1.2 is actually harder, but dangers goes through very fast. I think it was actually faster than Neo's 1.0 clip there. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, so that a... it, it's really hard to understate how much more difficult that is on 1.2 compared to 1.0. Like, Nintendo tried to patch that clip out, they tried their hardest, but it still works. Uh, just a lot more difficult for whatever reason. Uh, we're not sure what they did to make it harder, but it is yeah, more I, difficult, I but couldn't dangerous. Wait on that one. Like, a lot of the top like World Peace and Darker Side Runners on 1.2 are pretty good at it at this point, but it still can trip you up pretty badly, so nice to see Dangerous get that. I think it was on its second try. Yeah, second try. We'll never no, complain about a second try pyramid clip on 1.2. Oh, yeah, clipping into the pyramid uh, actually allows you to skip two story moons that are kind of slow, and one of them you still actually get later, but the other one you just skip entirely because it's way too slow to collect. Neo is still holding onto a very small E right now. It's 
We'll see if he gets the, the power of his favorite Brutal Harriet. <laughs> not landing on the moon there. That's actually something I've not seen before, surprisingly. Also another like little thing that you might see the runners try to do is they'll, they'll pick up coins wherever they can without losing time. Because you do need a thousand coins total in this run. You don't have to have a thousand at the end, you just need to collect a thousand at any point. So, especially coins in these boss fights, boss fights are really good to pick up because you kind of have to wait on cycles, wait for the boss to fly around. So you have time to pick up coins for free, basically. Worth mentioning as well that the coin restriction is a bit tighter on Neo's version due to the lack of uh, a hinter in Ruin. Yeah, so that's, that's something that won't necessarily save Danger's time, but... It just means he has to worry about it less. Like, he doesn't have to think about it as much. So it kind of... It doesn't really save time, it just makes it easier. Basically. I did notice, however, Neo did uh, pick up all the coins in this... Or attempt to pick up all the coins in the Sphinx Room as a result of that, I would assume. Since he's uh, got to worry about it a bit more. Whereas most people on 1.2 typically just kind of throw their cap out, grab a chunk, and that's good enough. Yeah. Yeah, grabbing all the Sphinx coins is definitely a good, like, safety play. So if Neo decides to play it safe with the coins, um, he could lose a few seconds here or there. Yeah, I think, because we can, we can definitely see the difference in coins already, actually. Uh, Neo having, like, almost 300 coins more, essentially. Yes, yeah, so that, I mean, that right there already makes up for the difference. Yeah, he's pretty so, much concreted himself for the run. Yeah, so by grabbing all those Sphinx coins, he can pretty much play it exactly like Dangers from here on out. Uh, so yeah, the, the only advantage really is 200 free coins that Dangers will get in Ruin Kingdom. So they're pretty yeah. even on coin count at this point. And it is worth saying, even without the hint art, the, the route coin rang wasn't too strict anyway. Yeah. It's, it's just that it makes it a lot less concerning. Yeah, because it is such a long run, collecting a thousand coins. Um, from basically going through the entirety of every kingdom twice isn't typically too difficult. But it could... It, it would just be one of those things that's annoying to get to the end and realize that you don't have enough coins. So much better to play it safe, especially in a race. Neo hitting one of the Chinchos, unfortunately. The true final boss of Sand Kingdom. <laughs> I thought the, the true final boss was the bullet bill jump, personally. Wow. At least that's not random. That's true. We'll give you that. So yeah, there will be two little bullet bill tricks that you'll see them try to go for, where they just try to capture a bullet bill a little sooner than they would by having to wait for it to reach the platform. Neo will just jump out here. Position himself so that the, the cap hits the, the Bullet Bill's hat off as it's notice, returning to Mario. I did notice that Neo was team left side and Dangers was team right side on that one. I'm personally team right side. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure team right side is actually faster. Yeah. I, I, think, I think I go left, but I do concede that I'm pretty sure right is faster. Just because of the way, just the, way the bullet bill flies, like you yeah. kind of bait it into going closer to where you need to wind up flying to anyway. Ultimately, it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, but, uh... Fractions of a second, probably. Oh, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they so, just did pull ahead with that, but uh, that was still a very clutch save. Much better than taking a death. Now, the other thing Neo could have done there was just dive and land on top of the cannon. That would have been a bit safer of a way to back that up, but also probably a bit slower. Uh, but utilizing every ounce of that up throw timing to actually capture that little bill, that was pretty clutch. Neo farming cat throws for me, I appreciate that.
Yeah, at least so far, as promised, we have a pretty close race. I think, realistically, only a few seconds still separating them. Yeah, pretty much. Typically, the only thing, the only thing up to this point that would mess people up at this skill level to like a large degree is either getting a really bad pyramid clip or dying on one of those bullet bill tricks. I think, and neither of those things happen thankfully for either of the maps. Yeah, I think the only other thing that would be uh, a mess up early is potentially snow clip, depending on which version uh, people go for. Yeah, I think. Metro Kingdom, I find personally that there's not like any one thing that trips me up there, but I feel like it's an easy kingdom to bleed time in. Yeah, I think the only major mistake I could probably make in Metro is um, missing the seed on the roof, or the, the pot on the roof. Oh, yeah. That would probably be the only thing that I would imagine would be an instant incredible time loss. Either that or falling trying to jump to the hint art. Yes. Or dying oh, yeah, silly. Yeah. Well, okay, I guess I guess we you could probably find big time losses everywhere. <laughs> but uh Metro typically those things don't happen, I guess is yeah. the point. So talking to that uh that Toasterine is another little setup thing for later in the run. He's gonna appear in a handful of kingdoms. I think it's six or seven different kingdoms that we'll see him in in this run. And uh, he every time we see him from here on out, he'll give them a moon. So talk to him there. Uh, you don't get anything out of it right now, but he'll be in very quick and easy locations to talk to him later multiple times that will give you a fast moon. So it's worth it. Yeah, we actually talk to him everywhere in this category except for the final time. Yeah, so he so kind of he kind of does a journey around where he goes to all the different kingdoms and then comes back to Sand Kingdom at the end. But we, that would require making like a third trip back to Sand Kingdom just to get that moon, so we don't bother with that. At the very least, we sent him home. Exactly. So now, uh. in Wooded Kingdom, I, I really like the Wooded route for Darker Side because it's the only one that just go straight into the deep woods. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely... I, I will say I have considered doing deep woods earlier in the longer runs, but because of the coin requirement for one of the moons and the outfit requirement for, for the purples, it's, it's a bit awkward. Yeah, it's hard to get 15 purple coins that you need uh, without collecting anything, any other moons. Up above. But yeah, in this category, like, outfit moons are all way too slow for the most part, so we don't have to worry about them. Uh, so we can just come down here right away. And th this is an area of the game that doesn't. There are no moons that get added here once you break open the moon rock in the Wooded Kingdom. So we're basically free to do this section anytime we want, and it just so happens to work out that it's fastest to do it right away. That wasn't too bad. In fact, I think that Dangers didn't really uh, fall too far behind because of that, because he had the dino the right way round, uh, and he had a bit of a struggle trying to turn him around, it seemed like the... Even missing the nut throw didn't seem to affect him too much. Yeah, the dino can be pretty annoying sometimes. Even when you're, like, even when you're controlling him or when you're not controlling him, just, it's impossible to like fully control where he's gonna go. Yeah, I've noticed sometimes he just kind of, if I if I have him facing towards the camera, he kind of just doesn't feel like moving. Yeah. Especially if I'm near a tree, which unfortunately there are a lot of them here. But they're still very neck and neck leaving deep woods as well. Yeah, they're pretty Even much with... coming out of deep woods at the same time. It's interesting because I did notice like a few mistakes on. I mean, like I noticed a few mistakes on Dangerous Pop, but I guess so. Uh, there were just mistakes on. Both parts that kind of covered it. Also, that's one thing that I wanted to point out that no one seems to notice. In 1.0, that uproot is immediately hittable. That's one thing I've noticed that isn't a thing on 1.2. Like really? dangers had to, yeah, dangers had to wait a little bit if you uh, watch it back another time. But on 1.0, that uproot is just there straight away. Yeah, I've never noticed that. It's very weird. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the same with every uproot or if it's just that one. 
a bit of a route divergence here. Danger's using the nut clip to actually skip the gate opening animation that Neo's watching now and the uproot capture to just go straight over the top, straight to this nut moon. So you can see kind of that was a live showing, a live timing of how much faster that trick is. Yeah, it's it's nifty. The only thing about that is the, the camera acts kind of weird when you go out of bounds in that particular section. And if you don't have the right angle to get that long jump around the corner, you could bonk into a wall and fall back into the deep woods, potentially. I will I will say, however, though, that even if you take the extra second or two to line up the angle, you will still save time. Uh, yeah, that's true. But it is worth going for, I would say, if you feel confident with the clip itself. Because it, I think it's around six seconds, I believe, someone timed it at. So yeah. you can take, you can afford the, the comfort time, I guess, if you want to call it that. For sure. So, we're actually gonna... We're gonna do all of the story mo Oh, dangerous. Oh! oh. <laughs> okay. That was, I don't, that, was, that was something. I, I don't know what he was trying to do there, but it looks like maybe he didn't realize that he actually saved himself. I think, yeah, I think he was resigned to his fate there. <laughs> and then he almost died because of it. Surpri surprisingly, still very tied up, though. So he kind of just lost back the time that he gained from doing that that clip. Nothing too tragic. Yeah, I think both uh, players have now been in, had a near-death experience. Even dying in that spot isn't the worst death in the world because you will spawn right back at the, yeah. like, after collecting that story moon. Yeah, literally spawn on the platform that you can use to do the flower road skip that they both perform there. So, before that calamity, what I was going to say is you might notice in every kingdom except for this one, they're going to collect the final story moon of each kingdom on this first visit. Um, right. This is the one exception. They're going to do this uh, fight with Spear here and then leave Woody Kingdom straight from there without doing the second half of the story moon, so fighting Torque Drift and all that. Um, they'll come back and do that later. Uh, it's just the one kingdom that it kind of works out that the way you get back to this kingdom later it kind of dumps you off right at the entrance to the second boss fight so it's better to just do that fight then and send them out and the reason you do want to do it eventually is because you don't have access to the moon rock in any kingdom until you achieve peace in that kingdom so uh, and then, and like a lot of the story moons are kind of slow and if that wasn't a requirement we would probably skip out on a lot of them but since you need to achieve peace to open the moon rock and the moon rock in every kingdom pretty much across the board gives you so many fast moons it becomes easily worth it uh not to mention the actual we you do get an additional moon at the end as well just for doing all the bosses even though it's you know it's not that significant as what it's just one moon but it is a bonus on top of that right So yeah, they will just head off of Wooded Kingdom, and we'll move on to Lake. They actually went to Wooded first, that might not be something that you're used to seeing as well. Uh, that's that's just a very minor time save uh, for later. Nothing too crazy, just gonna make looking at a hint art a little faster. Yeah, it's essentially just manipulating uh, the way paintings take you through kingdoms in post-game to just get a little bit of time save. There's a lot of very meticulous planning that has gone into the routing for this category like that. Little things that doing an entire kingdom out of order will save you like seconds. And sometimes, <laughs> so meticulous to the point where we uh, added a visit, or not added a visit, but split a visit just to uh, save some text. Yeah, pretty much. So it looks like Danger's regained a slight lead here at this point. Still pretty much tied, more or less. 
So largely, lake uh, the lake route here is any percent, but there is you may have noticed that the first moon here was skipped, but it will be collected just uh, a little bit later where it lines up more with what's going on in Dark So. Okay, he was doing the wall jump this strat. Something I still have yet to learn there, as well as Neo. Both making me look very unskilled. Yeah, I, I don't do that either. It's I feel like it's something that we could easily both just like sit and look at for five minutes and figure it out. I said that I was gonna do it and I think it was Neo himself that said it saves point one and I was like Well I could save point one or I could do something else. <laughs> it's all a it's all a balance in this game. Deciding what, what you're gonna spend your time practicing, what can save you the most time. I think I just feel like with the wall jump, I feel like I'm still in early 2018. Because I don't really see other people do it anymore. I feel like I'm in 2017. <laughs> it's like my Bowser's Kingdom shard strats. I like your Bowser Kingdom shard strats. <laughs> I like them they too. remind me of times long forgotten. Simpler times. <laughs> One thing I've noticed with this moon here, the first moon, uh, as I mentioned before, the camera sometimes likes to turn on its own, which, I mean, isn't a big yeah. deal. It happens as well, like, in the deep woods when you're collecting the, the Christmas tree moon. Um, yeah, you might even say it's a benefit, because it does make yeah. Mario turn towards where you want to dive. I think it's a benefit in Light Kingdom as well. Uh, but yeah, I think it's something to do with just being close to the wall, I think, because that seems yeah. to be when it happens in general, when the camera will just flip on you. I guess, that, like, because, like, my assumption is the game doesn't want to pan behind the wall when Mario is doing his little get cutscene. So it kind of just flips entirely around so that the camera's not, like, out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beneficial because you are facing the way that you want to go, which is away from the wall, so it makes sense. Uh, so now we're going into the most drastically different kingdom uh, from any percent, of course, Cloud Kingdom, which is okay, actually completely the same. Now you you could technically get a hint art here as well, but I think it's just like near impossible I, to do. In advisory. Time. I mean, you could probably do it if you were doing uh, safer strats, like not doing this back backflip kind of stuff. Right. I feel but, like uh, I would not I recommend. Know. Do, do you think it's possible to do without wasting any time if, if on like a task level? On a task level? Oh yeah. But I don't know if... It would probably be something like... You knock him away, spin pound over, spin pound hit, then roll towards where you need to go. Something like that. But I feel like that would look pretty disgusting. Oh, Neo having some trouble on the last phase there. He's gonna kind of chase his hat around and probably not oh, get it, no. yeah. It, once you kind of miss that hat, it's very hard to make up for it, kind of. I, I find most people wind up having to just go to an extra phase. It's unfortunate, but... Fortunately, that's not too bad in the grand scheme. It seem, it might seem like uh, Pages is uh, running away with it now, but we've got it's a very long run. Uh, all it takes is one rare, rarely, well, what's the word I'm looking for? One slip up of sorts, and it could, it could easily just tie up again. Yeah, because we're, we're halfway, or not halfway, we're half an hour <laughs> <laughs> into a three and a half hour run, so still a lot that can happen. I always say the run doesn't really start until post game. Yeah, it's very true. Time. I, w I would say though, I would say the first hour is probably for me personally the hardest, but I do think that the bulk of you, a lot can happen. A lot more can happen in post game, essentially, because yeah. I mean it's the bulk of the run. I think there's there's somewhat like a perceived difficulty in the first hour of the run, just because it's the stuff that we're used to doing in basically every category, so I think we kind of just have higher standards for it, so it feels more difficult to, to do, like, optimally the way we want to do it. 
I do think it's that, but I also do think there are more technical aspects. I mean, we've got both the clips, and if you do the uh, the key trick here, there's that that as well. That's true. But I do agree that it is that kind of feeling of optimizing the start just because we play it so much that it just I feels have... so hard to run against. You might have noticed they both took a death there after clicking that moon. That is intentional. Um, it's actually faster. Like, they came up to grab this checkpoint for that specific purpose. It's faster to just death warp than it is to land on the platform, open the menu, and scroll up to that checkpoint to warp to it. It's yeah, and that... All, all dying does is lose you 10 coins, which, does, you know, this run doesn't really affect things. Like we said for that coin requirement, you don't have to have a thousand coins, like, actually on you at the end. You just need to have collected a thousand coins. So losing yeah. those 10 coins for a death is really no big deal at all. And it just helps to return to basically what is the most powerful position in this kingdom because because it's such a small kingdom being on the, the very top area is just you can get anywhere very fast yeah so they're actually going to death warp again after collecting this moon under the bridge uh so they can once again get back to the top of the kingdom i was a bit worried there uh with dangers oh, that spin pounds i do not go for that spin pound even now I've tried it a couple times, and I think it's less it's less scary than it seems. It's it's less the actual spin pound, I think, for me, and just the actual dive timing. Right, uh, to yeah. Get that move. So oh, we'll see. Looks he's like, going for oh. it. I'm excited. This is a very difficult trick. Um... There oh, we go. Got it. Very nice. Let's see if Neo follows suit. Ooh, yes. the oh, double! We, we got excited. two spicy boys today. <laughs> <gasps> oh, oh no. he missed. Oh, See, that's... If, you, if you're not positioned perfectly with your hat throw, it's just going to home in on straight air like you saw right there. Instead of homing in on glide on. And yeah, I was going to say, I don't think Neo will go for it a second time. Yeah, I would assume he's going to take what is... We have a backup for... Or, okay, so most runners don't actually go for this trick. Um, surprised that we have two people both going for it this run. Or this race. Um, it, I don't know how much time it saves. It's not a lot, but the backup for not taking that moon would be uh, later on in a revisit buying a shop moon that you wouldn't normally enter a shop for. Yeah, as far as I know, it's only like... Like buying the shot moon or getting like the Goomba stack moon in Bowser's Kingdom, it's it's only like seven seconds slower overall yeah, than getting I, I know it's, moon. it's something around that area. It's not overly significant for most most players. Don't really need to do it. Yeah, like this category isn't at a level of optimization where those seven seconds are like super important. Um, yeah, if you're comfortable with it, it's a nice little time save. But it can definitely kill runs pretty easily because it's a it, it loses you a lot more time than it saves if you fail it basically. You can kind of see that here, oh, yeah. you know, trailing behind a little by a little chunk now. Still not it, a huge lead for dangers. Definitely not safe means. It definitely does make me happy that they both went for it, though. Because I do feel like, uh, outside of myself, I don't see many people go for it. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool trick, just visually. I think one of the more visually impressive things. And I'm all about the flash. Oops, the swag seconds. So one thing that we should also mention on top of that means that Danger is actually now two moons up as well, uh, due to FMS. Oh yeah, yeah. So that that's a good point. Um, Neil will have to collect two moons along the way somewhere. He probably will go for those two that I mentioned: the the Goomba Stack Moon at the beginning of Battle Kingdom and the Metro Shop Moon. Yeah, I do believe those will be quickest backups, or I don't even call them backups that, but they're just kind of part of the route. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're technically backups to what the most optimal route would be. But yeah. both, both moons that used to be in the route, there's been... There's, there are a lot of moons that 
are very borderline, very close to being fast enough to be a part of the 500 that you collect. There's a very like specific threshold of how long it takes to get a move, somewhere around 23 seconds. If it's any more than that, it's not going to be in the route. Unless it's a story moon, those are the only exception really. So I would imagine that you know, you know, I won't say anything because I've I've learned it's best not to in these situations until it's over. <laughs> I do not like this for dangers. Okay, it's, you got it. He's fine. I was never worried. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it wasn't the it wasn't the worst Wiggler pattern, but it certainly it was, wasn't favorable. I think I think when he crosses over like that, I tend to just kind of panic a little bit, and that does affect my shooting. Looks like Neo got a pretty good pattern there. Yeah, very easy one to deal with. Fortunate for him because uh, definitely wouldn't want to get a three cycle on top of everything right now. I feel like we've reached that point now with Wiggler where three cycle is less of a damn I didn't get a two cycle and more of a it's a reset sometimes. It just it it's a very annoying yeah. thing. It's like it's one of the more demoralizing like twenty second losses in the run, I feel. Because it feels like a lot more than that when you're yeah. in the moment. Yeah, I know my previous PB before the one I have now in Docs that actually had a three cycle. And I will say after I did after I got that PB, it was very nice to get to Night Metro and know I was going to save 20 seconds every time. Right. But in the moment, it's very upsetting. So there's not. Now they're in Day Metro, there's not too much to worry about in Day Metro. Like we said earlier, there's just not really any incredible risks other than, I guess, walking off the edge, but. I don't think we really even go near the edge in this route. Oh. Yeah, At least not, not, not in first visit anyway. Yeah, not on first visit. So just some more setup here. They're going to plant a seed. We'll actually plant two seeds in Metro Kingdom. Ooh! He brushed right up against that route. I was very surprised he didn't bonk there. Did that first person camera manip as well for the, dan uh, for the dangers, for the drama. <laughs> Neo did miss the uh, the capture warp at the beginning of Day Metro, so you can tell he's he's far behind because of the where the taxi is. Um, that taxi that you see in front of him now, if you are fast enough, you will beat that taxi to the bench friends moon. Yeah. I do wonder where these taxis are actually going. They just kind of circle the block. Well, isn't that what taxis do? I mean, I've never been to New York, but I would imagine the traffic is far worse than it is here. Oh yeah, I can attest to that one. I I would personally hate to be a taxi driver in any major city, but especially New York City. Yeah, I know it's pretty bad, and at least from from my own experience, taxi driving in London is just don't do it. Just take the take the train. So we're rounding up the band, getting the band back together. Uh, yeah, this would be one thing that's different from uh, any percent as well, if anybody, if that's the only, because usually uh, that's the category most people are familiar with. We actually gather the full band here, and we do get to play the festival, which is always a fun time. It's only a fun time if you're not the one playing it. I was about to say, unless you hate fun like Kervis. <laughs> I'm just not a fan of the the 8-bit sections in this game. Uh, I can safely say through recent events of me playing Damageless, I do not like the 2D sections in this game. <laughs> I just don't understand why they couldn't give them the new Super Mario Brothers physics. Feels like mm -hmm. it would have been an easy copy paste job, but then again, I don't really know anything about game development, so take what I say with a grain of salt. Yeah, he's just a taxi driver. Exactly. Wait, I am. <laughs> So Danger's maintaining his little lead here. He's going to enter the sewers. 
as a Neo. I collects, I believe, his last musician of the four. I do believe so. If you're not paying attention, it's hard to know because you can do the musicians in basically any order and not yeah, lose any time. They both have the same move count, so yeah. He, he's good. Yeah, because you can... There is no real time panel. It's the, it's the same. There are a few actually areas in this run where it's pure preference on what you do, which is quite cool. I think other than doing the... I mean, I think doing the drummer first is fastest. Uh, I believe that actually, well, I mean, okay, in, in this category, Drummer would probably be fastest, yeah. yeah. But if you're playing World Peace, you can actually do another musician first, which is faster than the Drummer, even though he's right there. But, uh... Yeah, you can use a capture warp to get to the, the guitarist, I think it is. But, yeah. The beginning of Metro quicker, That's but very... Second. It's very the re hard, though. The reason it's not viable in Darker Side is because we want to plant the seed near him. So yeah. it's better to warp to that checkpoint from inside City Hall and get to the seed faster that way. So pretty clean sewer movement from both of them. Yeah, nothing... No horrible mistakes in Metro that really cost a lot of time. Just... I think they had a few hiccups at the start, but nothing horrendous. And here's your precious festival. <laughs> Look, I'm a man of the people, and the people love it. I mean, I do enjoy it. Just, I just don't like controlling Mario in it. I don't really have an issue with the 2D controls in this game. I don't think they're as good, I will concede that, I just don't really have... I find stuff like there. what Dangerous did right there, jumping up around a corner like that, I find that kind of difficult for some reason. Right. Yeah, I can see that. I actually, yeah, I've hit that block a few times, just because I've misjudged uh, the timing. Yeah, it's like the momentum doesn't exactly change the way you expect it to when you're trying to go for a turnaround. So it can be kind of tricky. It's not super intuitive. I think it'd be really interesting if, uh, so in two-player in this game, you can actually get a little cappy boost uh, from the other controller in 2D. Like it gives you a little bump off the uh, little extra hover. And I feel like that would be really interesting if they'd use that like properly in this game, because it would have made the 2D a bit more unique. Yeah. But, uh... Yeah, I guess it's it's kind of hard to find a way to utilize cappy in. To the setting. I appreciate that he got a damageless festival for me though. I think both of them are damageless so far. Yeah. It's mainly the last screen that Mio's coming up on now that usually you can find yourself on a bad cycle and take a hit. Yeah, I normally just kind of barrel through. No pun intended. Uh, to take totally damage. That. Just take the damage anyway. I don't like to slow down. Yeah, if I if I see that I'm on a bad cycle, I'm just gonna eat it like like there. Yeah. Cause like taking damage loses you time in this game for the health refill, but since you're grabbing a multi moon, which doesn't re like it automatically refills your health without a cutscene. Uh, yeah. or without an animation, it doesn't really matter if you take damage in the festival. Yeah, the only time loss you're taking is like that slight moment where the screen freezes. Right. Fractions of a second yeah, instead of not multiple seconds. And there was our first moon from the Taurus on Danger's side. And basically he affects... He's he, he travels in a very specific kingdom order as well, so that's kind of part of the routing too. Making sure we're collecting him when we need to collect him. So that he moves uh, ne on to the next kingdom. Neo doing, uh, attempting to do one of those capture warp tricks to capture the pylon immediately after talking to the Taurus there. Uh, I guess he didn't want to go for it again after accidentally capturing the pylon. He does tell me to go for that all the time. I have rejuvenated faith in that I should never go for it now. No, it's not so bad. No, I, I know. I have I have done it the one time, but I do find myself capturing that pylon way too often to just care because it isn't a big time save. 
So I think it's one of those. Oh, sorry. Go on. I was going to say, uh, Snow Kingdom, we're going to have the, the second major blip sequence break in this run. Second and final, I guess. Now, worth mentioning as well, Dangers does know how to do uh, a different type of clip here, and there is a slight route alteration you can make for it. Uh, we don't actually know. I don't think we know if it's faster. It's just it's, that some people find not. it. The downstairs roll cancel clip is the fastest option for darker side, but only slightly, and it's much harder than the moon clip. So uh, yeah, it he does. looks like he is going to go for the moon clip. So basically, uh, if you were going to do the standard roll cancel clip, you would not be entering this room now. You'd actually get the moons above first, and then come into this room. Uh, so I believe Neo will. I don't think Neo goes for the moon clip. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, particularly so, not on 1.0. We might we might see both versions of the clip here as a result of that. And it'll be interesting if Dangerous doesn't get the moon clip. We'll see if he which roll cancel clip he goes for as a backup. Mm. So yeah, you'll see Neo jump on this umbrella and go straight up top instead of going to that Goomba room. So he'll collect these two moons and then go to the Goomba room and then clip. Uh, whereas Dangers will now come out of this room and come up and collect these two moons, and he'll use the second moon that you're about to see Neo get to try to clip through the wall. So I'm hoping he gets it. It's, it's not too bad. Um, I don't know how much, how fast he... Because you can do this moon clip very, very fast, or you can take a moment to set up. Yeah, because um, you want to be lined up in a very specific spot on the ground, so some people clear out the snow, they'll line ooh. themselves up. He just goes right for it, though. Oh, that's unfortunate. Alright, uh, so he's, like okay. he's going to go for the downstairs, though. Yeah, so he'll be doing the same clip as Neo, but once again, this is much more difficult on 1.2 compared to 1.0. I will say, uh, I, I was talking to Dangers again earlier, actually, about this. He said he didn't really feel that it was much different. Uh... You kind of have to approach it the same way. Okay, he got it decently quickly there. But it's it's just, it feels much tighter. Like, the, the timing to roll cancel is much tighter on 1.2. So yeah, we'll see Neo go for the, that same clip and get it first try because he's on the cheater patch. Uh, then just going to beat up the Shivarian quite nicely. So I do a little thing here with the Shivarian. I don't know if anybody else does it. Uh, when I'm jumping around the corner, I'll kind of throw Cappy above the Shivarian to like kind of get him ready to capture. Um, just kind of one of those. Yeah, like it's sort of similar to what Neo did there, but I think Neo's version was might maybe a bit faster because he just kind of didn't have to slow down. Yeah, that's a good idea. I never thought to do something like that. The little time saves, they're important. Let anyone tell you otherwise. Yep, the seconds make the minutes. And all that. And be sure to get your bound bull predictions in. Uh, I'm gonna wait. Actually, we gotta bet both at the same time now, I guess. Uh, so I'm gonna say. Dangers is probably gonna get. As, as a World Peace Champion, I'm gonna say a 53 for Dangers. Um, and Neo. Neo's I get a 59. <laughs> Well, I'll give Neo a 55. I, I don't know what to expect from Neo, to be honest with you. All I'm saying is 55 is at the top of Neo's skill level for this. We'll see. I believe in him. This is the run. I would like to believe in him. So we actually get kind of an accurate, like... Uh, time difference between the two looking at the uh, timers on screen. It's about 20 seconds. 52.99. I was 1 millisecond... 0 0.01 second off. The clutch 52. 52 is pretty... Uh, it's pretty good. good. That's, like, pretty, that's like... More or less the, the, the best people ever do it. Occasionally you'll see a 51. I think mostly just from Bayleaf. Yeah. I've never seen a 51. But most people, their, oh. their PBs are 52. That was so close! I was so yeah. close! But the 56? Oh, you doubted him. I doubted him a little bit, but that's okay. 
I was quite close to both. I basically should just go in at the lorry. Yeah. Ooh, that's oh. an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> that that's one way to approach that. That's one thing I've noticed. I think what well, I think if I had to guess, he probably had what I have sometimes where I'll spin the stick too much and yeah. I'll roll into another spin. Uh, it's really annoying when that happens. Sometimes I've kind of. Sometimes you can kind of predict it and then just do another spin pound. But uh, obviously, in that situation, it was a bit awkward. Yeah, because he was probably just trying to long jump there, but yeah. getting the spin and then pressing the jump button uh, caused him to just do a little slow spin jump in the air. Wasn't much he could do about that. Alright, so. A bit of a. An unfortunate snow clip for danger. I didn't actually see Neo's snow clip. How was it? It was first try. There you go, I don't think Neo's snow was. I think Neo's, Neo's snow was quite good, wasn't it? I didn't really see any mistakes on his part. Yeah, nothing too out of place other than a 56 pound ball, but you know, we'll let that slide. <laughs> well. You said 55 was the peak of his skill, so I guess it was extraordinary in that regard. Well, that's true. It was good for him. <laughs> Listen, Neo's better than me at almost every other section of this game, so I gotta poke my fun where I still can. No, that's fair, that's fair. I respect it. So now we'll get to see the best boss in the entire game. In this oh game. yes. You see him you... perched, perched atop the, the tall glass there. And only the truly passionate players will respect him by giving, acknowledging his full title. Dangerous getting the seed planted in the far back pot, which is fine. There's actually one pot that you can plant the seed in there that will take extra long to grow. And it will lose you a lot of time because it won't be fully grown by the time you get back to Seaside Kingdom later. And you have to water it. Thankfully it is possible to water it. So that you don't miss out on it entirely. But it does lose time still. But thankfully, both of them planting it in an appropriate pot to have it fully grown by the time they get back later in the post game. I wonder if uh, Nia will go for the the little cheeky strat on the uh, lighthouse, or on from the first story moon here to the second, with dropping the gushing down. Well, I was, you can like, you know, going straight from the lower ledge with the gush and you can actually make oh, it a right. jump, but it's, uh, it's a bit scary. Yeah, it's like, it's not super tight technically, but it's, the camera kind of does weird things there, so it's hard to consistently do and you'd lose a lot of time if you mess it up. But yeah, he's not going to go for it. I don't blame him. So we're just going to take a jolly little trip with the Gushin throughout the perimeter of Seaside Kingdom. Keep our Try to keep our Gushin buddy along with us for the duration. It's pretty much like the fastest way to move in this game is with Gushins, I think. Yeah, the only downside is uh, when you're required to drop for war. Just he kind of dead stops a little bit. Yeah. So you typically just want to kind of stay, you kind of want to stay level with the war uh, if you need it. Just so you can avoid having to drop it all. So you have to, to strategically place the Gushin in certain spots, like you see where Neo placed it right there. It has to be far enough away from Captain Toad or else Captain Toad will be too scared to talk to you. Because he's afraid of Gushins. 
And when you're around these story moons, you have to drop it far enough away from the story moon or else it will despawn. It's kind of like a little circle around these moons that anything yeah. just will despawn if they're close enough to the moon to grab it. Which is interesting because in, in this kingdom we kind of... You can kind of use it and uh, avoid it in the same section. Like, on the lighthouse, you could technically despawn the Gushin intentionally and just roll off and get the new one that respawns in its place. It's not that much slower. Yeah. And it's just a lot, uh... It's, it's pretty easy. I, I, I don't know, because I feel like you have to drop quite a ways down as the Gushin as well. From the lighthouse. Neo's still not very far behind here, uh, as Dangers collects this fourth story moon, will ground pound this final button and unleash the man himself, Brigadier, Paul's plants are the third dog man above lane, onto the world, onto the seaside kingdom. Worth mentioning, Neo actually did, uh, I believe Dangers actually missed the ground pound onto that moon there. Uh, yeah, and Neo got it immediately. So sort of, Neo's kind of keeping the pressure on, even even if he's behind right now, he is kind of. It, it is still that one mistake away, like for sure. This fight could even do it. Uh, one mess yeah, up this... on a phase of this fight could change the lead very easily. Yeah, because there are a few ways that uh, the Brigadier can eat up a lot of time. So Dangerous will try to position himself here uh, to hit the Brigadier in such a spot that he will wind up clipping through the hot spring. Kind of underneath that arch, but partially clips through the wall. He should have gotten it, yeah. So that just speeds up that last phase. Very nice fight from Dangerous. Pretty much optimal outside of keeping the gush in for the last hit. Neo, yeah, he'll get the clip as well. Good so, fights. Yep, good fights from both runners. I think, honestly, even though uh, Brigadier Mollus is like not, not uh, like he can he can eat up a lot of time. He's not too easy to mess up once you know what you're doing. Like he's kind of he's very predictable, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Yeah, if you know your spots, you're pretty much gonna get it every time. Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that if it goes wrong, it goes really wrong, typically. I mean, I feel like looking at the Odyssey right now, it's a good example of what you mean by the run doesn't start till post game. So we're about an hour in now. And there's only 106 in the Odyssey. But when we hit post game, you're just going to see the moon collection rate just take off. Yeah, like you have to get a lot of these story moons out of the way now. And there's a lot of cutscenes, a lot of traveling between kingdoms cutscenes. So the, the pace is definitely much slower for the first hour and a half or so until we get to the post game. And then yeah, because yeah, it's, it's like 150 moons that you collect throughout the first visits. And then you go back through all the kingdoms again. Basically take just as long, but you collect double the amount of moons to get up to 500. So, much faster pace in the post game. Standard start to lunch, and uh, the only difference between. Well, no, not the only. I mean, that is quite different from the size. You go left instead of right. Uh, because the moons on the right side actually complement more moons in post game. 
so we just kind of ride the left wall all the way up to spew it. Yeah, like that timer challenge, there's not really anything that spawns from the moon rock on that half of the kingdom at the beginning. But there is stuff that appears over on the right side. So you just gotta figure out what goes best with the post-game moons and collect everything that doesn't really fit with them on the first visit. Alongside collecting things that go well with story moons that you have to get. Make a nice path for yourself. But I, you know, I actually think both of them are probably on PB pace right now. Uh, I wouldn't be too surprised. Because they both I had really... like, like, I think like mid 58 seaside exits. Yeah, I actually don't know my own seaside exit. Uh, I can tell you my seaside exit is a 5845, looking at my splits right now. And my PB is about a minute ahead of both of theirs, so if they're on PB pace on my splits, I would assume that means they're on PB pace on their own. Yeah. Or you've got some work to do in early games. Wow, that's probably true as well, but regardless, definitely good enough pace to get some kind of low 320s run as of right now. Yeah, definitely showcasing uh, the upper end of dark side runners. Oh, that was unfortunate. I find that that's 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 another thing that happens to me a lot is I kind of if Cappy's too close to the wall, he'll just kind of brush along it and then. Your dive is going to miss. Uh, also worth mentioning, this room is terrible. Yeah, this room sucks. Oh! Uh, <laughs> uh, for reasons provided by dangers. And when you die after clicking that moon, I feel like it's even worse because you're not used to the cycles of everything going on. And just like approaching the kingdom, or approaching the, the room from that side without... I will say, this could be what ne Neo needs though, right now. Being yeah, two moves down. Gained a lot of time there. Almost caught back up visually with dangers, but yeah, he is still down two moons. Something to keep in mind. So he's a little further behind than it appears right now. But still nothing drastic. Ooh. Oh! Oh, he's fine, okay. <laughs> Those... Yeah, these walls are not good. The, the walls in Luncheon as a whole, they're just like... Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they're janky in your favor. And sometimes it just really screws you. So yeah, coming up, we'll go through Ruin Kingdom. That'll be business as usual outside of collecting one extra moon that you don't really see in other categories. And then Neo will probably get one of his backup moons in Bowser's Kingdom. So he'll be closer in moon count. He'll only be one moon behind the yeah, we'll at that get, point. Get a slightly more accurate uh, representation of the pace of both, or pace comparatively. Yeah. So the entire reason we come warp to that checkpoint and come all the way over here is to look at this hint art that Danger's gonna look at right now. Otherwise, I think we would just approach this kingdom from the Odyssey and just roll and move our way over to where I've we never go. seen uh, that movement before, actually. hop approach, jump over the logs. I would never do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of that. Neo, as you saw, just kind of slides around them. 
Dangerous does do that nifty little spin dash into the lantern, though. You, like, just barely have enough height to make that work. Yeah, I, I used to do that, and then it just, I missed it once, and I'm like, alright, never again. The reason I don't do it is because I seem to, even whenever I actually get the, the photo about to light the lantern, I just ledge grab, and it annoys yeah. me. So, I, I do what Neo does, right, that what they saw him do right there. Uh, just jump. Do, do the full hop there. Drop Kotobo onto the lantern. Should land this? Yeah, any purple coins you see the runners collect is entirely just like by coincidence. You don't actually need any purple coins in this category. So sometimes they just happen to be directly in your way, so you just grab them on accident, I guess. There's no real downside to like grabbing them, but you're never going to use them in this category. Essentially, the more purple coins you grab, the cooler you are. That's typically how I uh, measure it. Debatable. Oh, and Neo <laughs> having some trouble there with, uh... Let's see if he oh. hopefully he doesn't die to a lantern. Will he get the heart here? Yeah. Well, he oh. will get a checkpoint. Yeah, I just wondered if he would get the safe food. That's some interesting movement from Neo. I think wanting to avoid jumping over <laughs> the, the uh, Pepto Bismol. Like a yeah. And we went from the best boss in the previous kingdom to the worst boss. Still my favorite, by the way. Ugh. Not only did he do it damageless, he also got the Timpani 3 hop. 4 hop! <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, guys. We love Timpani, but sometimes he doesn't know how to count. It's okay. He did do it damageless, though, which I'm happy enough about. One. Oh, oh he's no. gonna miss! See, these, just like landing on these little broken up segments of uh, Cookatiel's vomit. Honestly, that was your fault for counting. That's true. So, not a super clean fight from Neo, but not really bad either. I think he only needed like two extra hops compared to Dangers on that last phase. So. Not too bad. The worst is when you get all the way up to the top and you're one jump away from hitting, getting the last hit, and then you fall all the way back down. One of the most worrying parts of the run is coming up there next. One of the hardest tricks in the game, the elusive Neo Dram. Now, getting a spin pound at the start of Ruin Kingdom is legitimately one of the hardest things. It's fine for me. I don't, I don't even go it. for that. I, I always try it, but like half the time I, just, I wind up. I just, I just long up. jump. Yeah, Dangerous is going to take a similar approach. Oh, and it's the wall jumpless Neo Dram. Legendary. Looks like he almost got a bad angle on his dive towards his cap. Yeah, I was worried about that. But pretty clean. Dangerous there. And here is the advantage we mentioned earlier. Ground pounding that Captain Toad. Uh, it's going to give him 200 coins. So his coin count... I actually haven't been watching their coin counts since Sand Kingdom, but that like makes up for the points that Neo got earlier in the Sphinx room that Dangers avoided. So yeah, he's at 612, Neo still has about 100 more than him, but Dangers point count is more than good enough at this point in the run. Both pulling off the nice Neo Dram effortlessly almost. Uh, Neo Dangerous. trying to ground pound the Hinnard spot. Unfortunately, I don't think anyone told him it doesn't work. Salt Dangerous doing some ballet with Captain Toad there. While he waits for the dragon. Hey. 
You gotta find some way to entertain yourself during this fight. Are you saying that this fight isn't intense enough for you? I'm uh, actually, I'm actually yes. terrified throughout this entire fight. Especially over the last few days. I was really worried about him there. <laughs> I was uh, kinda... The, the damage, like, the damage invincibility lasts for way longer than you think it's going to, so I've learned to not really be concerned in that situation. The only thing that would concern me is if little spiky guys spawned earlier, because they can jump into you and damage you. So yeah, we've got probably the most boring kingdom out of the way now. Nothing crazy going on here. And Bowser's is just... I feel like Bowser's is difficult, no matter what, in every category. Um, I guess, yeah. It really, uh... I think it's because the hardest parts of this run are probably, like, the any percent portions anyway. Yeah. Which, I mean, you're, you kinda, you're kinda forced to do in every category just because any percent kinda requires being the story. So we see Dangerous, he gets to roll past all these Goombas, but Neo is gonna have to stack them up to get the moon that they provide. Well, he doesn't need to. Oh, Dangerous bopping what? Tokyo on accident. He would have used that to warp himself back up after grabbing the moon, but... Just gonna have to capture this other one. Just a couple second time oh. loss. He's killing all the birds. I, of all people, I did not expect dangers to be the one doing this. I know. Tragic. He's gonna need that checkpoint. I thought he was gonna forget the checkpoint. Then I thought he was gonna die. That yeah, was a, I wasn't sure what was going on there. That was a roller coaster of like three seconds. Yeah, Neo now only one moon behind Dangers, but gonna be a bit further behind visually, time wise now. Like that one. But still very much a close match, I would say. And I would realistically, I would think if you're within a minute of each other going into post game, that's like still really close for Darker Side. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even you could have something happen beyond your control that ties out AK fishing. Yeah, like fishing in alone in the post game between the three different fishing moons can lose you like 45 seconds Dane if you get really doing, bad luck. Dane was doing a nice long jump dive back for the shard. Uh, unfortunately, this shard doesn't want to cooperate. I find the beak with the Pokio quite strange in this game, like, he just kind of poked the box, but the shard was still, yep, I'm collected. It's very odd. So I've never actually seen Neo's shards, I'm wondering what kind of strats he does. You know, that ground pump might be... Uh... I actually didn't know you could make it up to the top there with just a single jump. I always backflip there for safety. Oh, yeah. Especially... Yeah, th that ceiling isn't too high. Alright, so I did brief dangers before this run. 
I gave him one word of advice. And I'm curious what's gonna happen now. Oh, I'm so proud of him. Topper first, gang. <laughs> so I said to him before this race, Neo's absolutely gonna do Harriet first. So I need you to do Topper first. Otherwise, I'm going to be very disappointed. Now, something Dangerous didn't do, though, is collect the two Jizo Moons near the shop. Um, I kind of expect Neo to grab those now. I don't know if Dangerous forgot to do that or if he just doesn't do that. Um, you can get them second visit as well. But I expect Neo to do that, so Neo might actually wind up being ahead in moon count by the end of Bowser's. Yeah, actually, I, that. I actually completely forgot about that. I wonder if... I don't know... I don't, considering Dangers has not played Dark Side that much lately, um, I do feel like maybe he's using notes, and if he is using notes, maybe he just doesn't have... Has, hasn't updated it for that. Yeah, it could be that that's just not on the route he's using, but I also find that this is a very easy, easy thing to forget to do on first visit. Yeah, it's just very natural to just skip the island. So yeah, Neo's doing these two moons now. He's going to be a moon ahead, most likely, coming out of Bowser's now. So he's going to look even further behind than he actually is. Having some trouble jumping out there, but gets home, yeah, I think, the third try. I, I can relate to the struggle there. I actually did find a better way to stop that from happening. It's difficult because you can't really see where the hole in the ceiling is, but yeah. you kind of have to line yourself up with... There's like a speck of dirt on the floor <gasps> that I use. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh, my heart. All I know is top of first gang. I'm so confused. Two for two. I thought I he was gonna. I thought he was gonna top a first fake out into Harriet first, but then he yeah, double faked me out. I I don't know if he was just like messing up his movement there, or if he was baiting us. I, I don't I, know. Can't tell at all. It's Neo. I'm absolutely sure he was baiting us. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> well, you know what? All if I know nothing... is he's, he's definitely gonna say that he was baiting us, even if it was messed yeah. up. Even if nothing else, I got I I ended up influencing Dangerous to do top first, so now there's no Harriet first in this run. Just the way it should be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, we have fun here. So after Dangerous collects this moon, he's pretty much going to shoot straight to the top of the kingdom. Where there will be a couple more moons to collect right into the final fight of Bowser's. We get a little bit longer of a journey with our Pokeo friend here. So he will take it, walk it all the way over to the backside where he will poke another hole in the wall. I will say one thing that really, uh, one of my worst muscle memory traits uh, or habits here is just dropping that Pokeo. Yeah. I'm probably the opposite There's... where if I try to do any percent runs, I'll wind up keeping the Pokeo for too long. There actually is another spot in Darker where the opposite effect happens, where in Darker you drop the bird, but in AUM you don't drop the bird. Um, which is... Way later, we're gonna talk about that when we get there. That actually happens to be quite often as well. That little uh, catching head on the back lip. catching the. Th Thankfully, it's easy to kind of save that and not fall off. So, just to be clear as well, just even though it looks like Neo is quite a bit behind her, he does have two moons that Dangerous doesn't have, and he actually does, he did have to get an extra moon here from earlier, um, that Dangerous picked up, so... Yeah, so Neo he's... kind of having a lot of fake time loss in Bowser's yeah. Kingdom, compared to Dangerous. So he is, I think he's equivalent now? No. Okay. He should he's... be one moon ahead of Dangerous. Yes, one moon ahead, um, but one of the moons he is, two of the moons he's picked up, Dangers will pick up later. Right. Yeah, so, it makes sense. It's definitely not as far off as it looks. 
Yeah, if you consider that moons, like, some of the slower moons are like 20 to 23 seconds, um, you can kind of just say, like, since he's a moon ahead, uh, cut 20 seconds off of whatever his time is, and that's, like, cl much closer to what the actual pace is between these two. You know, getting bopped by the spiny there. My favorite enemy in this game. Oh, everybody's favorite. They're just the best. Especially when you're trying to collect notes around. I do them. love unkillable machines of destruction. They're like the, the cockroaches of Super Mario World. That's a very apt comparison. Oof. Bad spin pound angle there. But... Yeah, that was uh. That's okay. That as, long as, as long as he doesn't commit the mortal sin of Bowser's Kingdom. Which would be. Jumping into that pipe. <laughs> you know, I thought that, but I didn't want to ask. I didn't want to say out loud. Um, just in case. Oh yes, so Neo doing his uh, very unique take on Robo Brood. Climbing up the left side first. Left side? Yeah, he climbs up the left leg. He gets to spew it first. What is this? 2017? <laughs> no, no, he doesn't do it that way. He doesn't bonk. He climbs up the left leg. The same way you would do it the right side. Oh! oh! That's... that's what you get for going left side, Neo. <laughs> that's, that's very unfortunate. Uh, he, he actually, like, his momentum just kind of flew, he just kind of flew off. And I think, isn't this the phase where it's going to be hard for him to climb back up without the lights um, closing? Okay, I guess not. Nah, he's good. Oh, nah, gonna I go for that, Harry a third, yeah. though. Oh, no, that, oh, okay, he was a phase <laughs> ahead of what I thought he was. I was a little confused there. Danger's actually on. Well... I, I want to say really good pace, but he didn't get those two Gizo moons, so the pace isn't as good as I think it is. Yeah, I think he's on 128 to 129 uh, end game pace, I believe. It should be under an hour and a half. Yeah, for sure. Ooh. Nice oh. catch. <laughs> That's the backup. If, if you miss that rock, like if it hits the ground, it'll break, and then you have to take this, you have to go like grab another one. To break open the one with the moon in it. It's like those rocks are really dumb in this game. If you if you just throw them around, the one with the moon, if you throw it around, it won't break immediately. But if you run a, another rock into it, it just breaks right away. So it's way faster. This strat is actually one that I really struggle with. Oh, uh, for, for that reason, actually, I just I never seem to catch that other one. Yeah, he tried to catch the second rocket flower with while his cap was returning to him, but just barely missed it. So he's just gonna have to roll to the Sphinx instead. Not like too crazy at the time loss, but Let's see if he gets the first try moon skip here. And of course he does. He's a pro. We expect the first try. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> That's your fault. <laughs> It's on you. Oh, that's so... I'll sad. accept that. I'll accept that. That's very, very unfortunate. That's actually huge because that's, as you can see, sends you all the way back to the beginning. I you won't have to collect all the moons again, but he's yeah. going to have to roll his way all the way back. Sphinx. This moon has been very unkind to dangers, actually, so far. He was wow. so close to, to diving back onto safe land as well. I, that, that, I've seen that happen so often. That that ground that you walk along when you finish the moon skip, it just doesn't seem like it's real solid ground because you don't seem to get your cap bounce back sometimes. It's very weird. Oh, now maybe getting in his head a little bit. Missing his cap bounce there a couple times. I'm gonna play it yeah. a little safe. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't blame him for that one. I saw Mario jeering a little bit on the edge there. I, I would have done the same thing. I think. I'm gonna take a little detour around the side of the chapel here to get a couple moons. 
And Neo got that nice little triple jump vector that Dangers missed. Uh, looks like he, he came up just short of that one platform, so he had to take a little bit of a long jump approach. Does look like he's merging side. to capitalize on uh, the mistakes here. Yeah. For sure. And I think he, he had to get both it? rocket yeah. flowers. I think, I think. Oh, he yeah, almost he bonked. He yeah, he definitely got both. So Neo having, uh, contra uh, conversely, a good moon, a uh, really good moon. Yeah, kind of a textbook moon kingdom here. Yeah, I guess I guess really good might be an exaggeration. It's, it's not too technical here. It's mainly just kind of knowing how to use the low gravity to jump far. And most importantly, he did not die. Yeah. And mainly probably because we uh, didn't say much. Yeah, I, I tried to avoid it. I didn't want to <laughs> curse two people in the same race. So we'll see One how this of... shakes out here. Um, we won't really have a good idea of the exact pace until the Metro revisit, I think. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a... Oh, oh, dangerous. oh, that's unfortunate. Having a really rough Moon Kingdom here. We'll see if he can kind of just make it out of here oh. alive, hopefully, and pick things back up in the post game. Oh, but Neo, I think, is going to miss a phase there as well, yeah. One thing I actually... I'm kind of sad that they put the gravity back on in this fight. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, I just feel like, because it's very, it's basically the same fight. It's just they could have been a bit more yeah. creative. You know? I just think I'm, they could have also been creative in other ways than making things zero gravity. Well, I'm not, I mean, like, they could, the fight would have been different. It wouldn't have just been hats. Again. Right. I just mean, that there's, there was potential there. But I feel like, I feel like, I feel like that with a lot of things in this game, like, there's a lot of potential that just kind of got missed. It's still a great game, obviously, it's just, uh,. Could have been more, I guess. But fortunately, Danger's finishing the fight without a death. That would have been very tragic. Yeah. Uh, it does uh, look I like think... he's still on pace for the sub half, sub hour and a half end. I think even considering that Neo's a moon ahead, I think Danger still has a slight lead here. Uh, I do believe so, yeah. But it's definitely nowhere near as uh, large as it was. Yeah, it's probably within like 20 seconds. In reality. Let's bring the extra move. Oh, early pause. And I'm not, I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. I don't know what you mean. Okay. I just I, I was I was about to say like hopefully Dangerous just doesn't have a failed 2D shortcut because that would just be the cherry on top of a not so great move kingdom, but thankfully he was able to avoid that. Maintaining his lead into the post game. Yes, with the where it really starts to take off, it should be quite interesting to see how both of them play honestly in the post game. Yeah, this is the, the real juicy action. We've got about another 350 moons for these runners to collect before we reach the darker side. So strap in, the run starts now. Uh, Danger's really stretching for that early pillar. Did get it though in the end. I think that's worth it. Yeah, but I, I mean, it, as long as you don't have to slow down too much while heading towards the next one, it's, it's probably worth it. Like that sharp turn, shot back, you, know, you didn't really have to slow down too much for it. Yeah, Danger's gonna come away with a 129 early game here. It's not bad at all. Definitely. Considering, yeah, I, I think Realistically, everything except for Moon King over Dangerous has been really pretty good this round. Yeah, like, Lost especially was quite good. 
uh, getting that trick immediately. So that means in post game he's going to save a little time over Neo, of course, as well. Thankfully, not 100%. I don't know that I would have the energy to <laughs> commentate an entire 100% race. I think I could do it. We, we even need some shifts for that one. Nah, I'll take it. I'll just... We'll have a, a showcase where someone does the run, or a group of people do a relay of it somehow, in some way, even though it's kind of hard. And then I just commentate it. 100% relay would be really fun, I think. Just the only problem is uh, the same problem we have nightmare. with the Yeah, it's just too many statistics to track. Yeah. I mean, you could for the sake of... Just having like, it done, fun just say it's fine. Yeah, just like not account for... Like, just take out the jump farm and cat farm sections. Just whoever does the last portion of the relay, just have those prepared to be able to collect those moves ahead of time. Uh, worth mentioning here, uh, this is actually, I don't know how many other people do this, uh, Dane is actually electing to go straight to Peach's castle after throwing the season. I don't know if Neo does this too. I believe he does. Because there, okay, so typically most people will do a little bit extra mushroom or they'll get a few more moons. However, if it is optimal if you get a good seed throw uh, from far away to go straight to the castle. And do the yeah. other things in Mushroom Layer. But it's the time like, save is very, very negligible. It's negligible and it's only. Like, it only exists if you get perfect seed throws. So, yeah, Neo will go straight to the castle as well. Thankfully, otherwise, that would create an even bigger moon discrepancy yeah. that I wouldn't really have the mental energy to account for <laughs> for the rest of this run, to be honest. So. Yeah, that's good. There's so many. Oh, but one he is apart. getting moons here. Oh, okay. Well. Thanks, Neo. But it, <laughs> it should only be... He'll get the light from the ceiling and the tiles moon, so he'll be three moons ahead now. I don't think that he's doing that for spite, though. I, I think he has no. said on record he does do that. Yeah, he does normally do this, I believe. Ooh, I like that. I've not seen that before. So yeah, basically we're going to have to like factor in that Neo currently has three more moons. Um, fortunately, if you I want believe... a, a rough estimate, just say like Neo is, there's going to be like a one minute discrepancy just based on moon counts. So if Neo's a minute behind, he, they're more or less tied. That's not exact, but that's r a rough enough uh, estimate that you go by. For now, at least, until the moon counts shift again. And here's fishing. First fishing moon for dangers. It's a one. So this uh, fishing mini game, since we mentioned it earlier, is actually random whether this fish will uh, give you a small or a big bite. And if it gives you a small bite, uh, which it looks like it's really destroying oh. dangers right now. The seventh was... bite and it wasn't even a good bite, so he's going to have to wait for it to respawn. So, yeah, if you get a small bite, you, can't, you won't be able to pull in the line to reel the fish in. Uh, if it's a big bite, then you can reel it in. This is some really unfortunate uh, luck. Oh my goodness. That that's, was like 12 bites total. I've, I've not... That's that's a record. Not, for, well, we for don't me. know... We don't know if 
he just missed a big bite because it's possible like sometimes it's, if it's the first bite and it's a strong bite i like don't react to it in time so that could have happened to him i'm wondering like, what i'm wondering what happened with the first one the it seemed like it, it didn't seem like he was late on the pull up, so it, it seemed like he just pulled up on us. On us. On yeah, I think bite. maybe he was just a. Because I know, I know when I get like a late bite, I get a bit of a trigger finger. Yeah, he so was probably just, just kinda... anticipating it because like seventh, it was that was seventh bite that he pulled up on, and that's typically like a really the most bad fish. Ever take. Like I think I've had eight before one time, but yeah, seventh bite is typically like the longest it'll take. So he was probably just anticipating it a little bit too much. Pulled up on a bad one. That was really shocking, and there are two more fish in this route, so I'm really hoping that uh, the rest of them are there. And I don't even see what happened with the Neo's fish. Uh, I would assume it was fast. It seems like it was since I missed it. Honestly, though, I mean, it is what Neo needs right now. That 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 fish luck. Yeah, I mean that. That fishing cost quite a bit of time. That was probably like somewhere in the ballpark of 25 seconds of dangers lost to that fishing moon. It was definitely a significant chunk of time. I would say at this point, I'm not even sure who is who is ahead now. Neo might be ahead because he's not visually all that far behind, and he does have three extra moons at this point. Yeah. So Neo might actually be in the lead right now. There you go. This is anybody's race, and we are an hour and a half in. So that's it's that's a good sign of a good race. If it's kind of hard to indicate the the leader in the post game. For sure, we're kind of right where we expected to be with these two. They're, the difference in this race is probably less than the difference between their PVs right now. Dangerous. Having trouble with this tunnel. These these tunnels suck. Like if, if I'm being quite honest, I wouldn't be surprised if he was a bit upset. Yeah. Because of the fish. I think, I think that would upset me greatly. The fish can be kind of tilting, for sure. It's like the one major thing, it's not even that major, but it's like the most major thing in this run that is just like entirely out of your control. But hopefully just kind of shakes it off and just gets back into it. That, uh, that leaving that spiny, while I imagine it probably wasn't his intended, is actually optimal. Uh, yeah. Because the camera does pan less to make that moon spawn if you're closer to it. So he did, that, he did actually save a little bit of time there. Unless uh, Neo gets it as well. Yeah, I feel like it's a hard thing to do on purpose. So as you can see on Neo's screen, the camera, like, since Mario's much further away from the moon, the camera just pans a lot more, so it takes longer. A couple seconds. That whole sequence. So I don't think we mentioned it all, but the clip that you did in the first bit of the snow kind of did some really awesome things for these rooms. Um, in particular, there's normally a fight with Rango here, but since we already collected the last multitude of the kingdom, the game, I guess, just kind of thinks that the fight is already done, so it just spawns the moon here on this platform that if you I, if can I, from the fight without actually having to do the fight. If, so, I had to, if I had to guess for this, I'd probably say it doesn't check whether the moon is transparent or not. It just kind of puts it Right, off. exactly. So yeah, uh, this and... In the room you're about to see dangers enter now, there are normally moon shards that you need to collect in this room, and they are also not there, and the moon is just waiting for you at the top. So, those two things are a big part of why Snowclip saves so much time and is so important to this route. It's like in the neighborhood of multiple minutes that you save by doing it. And yeah, much like the musician order in Metro Kingdom, the order you do these rooms in doesn't really matter at all. Yeah, it's it's fine whichever way you want to do it, as long as you do poison room first, because obviously you're closest to it. But uh, right, I think most people will typically do the rooms the same way. I don't see much deviation on that preference. Yeah. 
Honestly, I see most people do the musicians in the same order as well, for whatever reason. Yeah, I think it's just because most people, when they learn this route, they look at the, what, the same document, probably. Right, yeah, so, so whoever, just, just whoever like... managed to do it first, everyone just and copied what they did. By, by the time they realize that it doesn't matter, they're just kind of already doing it. Yeah. So, you saw Dangers jump a couple times instead of talking to this guy. The camera is really dumb in this game in some spots where you can't actually talk to certain NPCs unless the camera is like directly facing them. This is one of my favorite moves, and I have no idea why. It's one of my least favorite. <laughs> really? I feel like I always get like miss like I, you know, I, dives I, I, in the wrong direction when I'm trying to like I'm just like my cap doesn't throw in the right spot to hit the boxes. Hits like the corner where it immediately returns to me. I don't know. There's a lot of annoying stuff that happens on that move. I, I don't know what it is. I just like it. Unfortunately we're not gonna see any blowy noise in this race. Which I mean is not surprising because it's not that great. It's inconsistent, and it saves like a second. Yeah, it's not a big time save, but it is, it's got the best trick name in the game, so... It's true. Right, so now Danger's heading into the best part of the run. Uh, for reasons. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a, not a big fan of... Admittedly, if it wasn't for one moon in particular in this kingdom, I actually would- I actually really love this kingdom. Oh, so I, I kind of didn't pick up on the fact that Dangerous grabbed the chest moon on first visit. Uh, I think Neo did it as well, actually. Oh no, well, obviously Neo well, did Neo it. Well, Neo would have had to grab <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was a mistake on my part. So, yeah, he was- he dropped down and grabbed that moon that you would normally get first visit in other categories right there. It's right below the painting. And head up and break the smooth rock. Oh. What's going on here? I have not seen this before. Wait. Neo did not drop down after the moon rock? No, or, he hasn't oh, broken it yet. Oh, interesting. I guess we'll see. Neo hiding strats? Either that or not remembering the route. One of the two. Well, it confused me because that's what you do in AUM. So I was a bit okay. interested. Well, okay, you break, you do break the moon rock first, but you do go up to the arena after. So I am kind of curious what. Uh, I'm just trying to think what he would be doing or skipping as a result of doing that. Well, basically, you would go from the moon that is hanging off oh, the side yeah. of that bridge and drop straight down. So yeah, that might actually be faster. But where's he gonna go? I'm just trying to remember the, the route here. Um, to the T-Rex. Hmm. I guess. I'm dangerous getting one of the worst moons in this kingdom, personally. Uh, fairly safely. He's taking a bit of a different approach for me. I try to just avoid as many cloud platforms as possible. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm the same way. I actually expected him to just long jump back to the... from that one cloud platform he had. Since you can actually just make it uh, from there with a long jump. My uh, motion controls here are quite notorious for not going through for some reason. So, danger's coming up on the moon that you kind of referenced earlier. 
I believe, what? anyway. Well, this is just a normal, uh, everyday move. Oh. So he's gonna take this Chain Chomp and throw it into this rock. Hopefully get it first try, but yeah. It, it, as far as we can tell, this is literally luck, whether or not you hit this, this rock. And every time you fail it, an a another possible part of you dies. Oh my god, it's so bad. And it seems like if you fail it once, it's just like more likely to fail multiple times for whatever reason. It's, but, it's just, it's I dumb. That was fourth try, so Danger's yeah. actually getting some really atrocious luck in this post game so far, unfortunately. Curious to see what Danger's, uh, Danger, sorry, Neo does here because he got the extra moves earlier. Uh, Neo also missing it though. He does another time, so we've got four from Dangers currently on three for Neo. Four for both, so no time lost or saved on either on each other there. Other than set up time, of course. That was terrifying uh, by Neo there. So he's just gonna go straight to the dino here. Yeah. I actually really like this. Uh seems a lot better. So they're actually order. very close now. Very, very close. Well, keeping in mind that Neo is still three moons ahead. Yeah. So he's got a pretty... Hit. Neo's largest lead of the race so far. I have... <laughs> I've, I've, I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen the... Oh, and Neo here had to drop into the water there, notably because if he ran into the first moon, it, it it's tempting, it's sitting right there, you would think it would just be a fast thing to collect right now, but if he collects that moon right now, his game will soft lock. So he dropped off the bridge with the dino just to steer it entirely clear just so he didn't accidentally touch that moon. Yeah, I actually completely glossed over that, so I'm glad you remembered for me. <laughs> it's just, I'm so used to being on 1.2. I didn't yeah. even notice, I just, I didn't even notice it was a real moon. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have noticed if he didn't drop into the water so soon. What kind of reminded me, he had to be really careful around that moon. It was like he would be able to continue the run, I think. Like, yeah, you would, you would just have to reload the game. Right, because the game like auto saves after every moon collection. Yeah, it would probably so, just pop it. I think it would just pop him by the Odyssey with the moves he has. It would pop him by the Moon Rock probably. It, that or. I think it is the Odyssey. I, I could be wrong, though. It, but might, it, would also it might be him. the Odyssey, yeah. It would also require him to go get the T-Rex again and bring it back over. Right, at which at that point it would probably be better just to get another backup moon. As opposed to going all the way back to the T-Rex. Yeah, but at the same time it might just be best, unless you know a backup moon already, to well, just do it again. Neo because... is the routing master of this category, so I'm sure he has plenty of backups in mind. Yeah. If he needed them. Fortunately, he did just remember. Oh, he did just avoid it, and it's fine. So here's where we're gonna see uh, a bit of a more accurate representation after this kingdom's done, Bowser's, as Dangers will pick up the two moons that Neo's picked up earlier. So, even after this, Nia will be... One? One, one oh. moon ahead still, yeah. And that will kind of be true for... Basically till the end. Yeah, almost. pretty much. Like, he'll get another... He'll get an extra moon in Metro. Yeah, and he'll yeah then he'll be two ahead. up. Till the very end, basically. Oh my god. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but Neo accidentally grounded the wrong boxes there, but he just like bonked, just dove and bonked into the yeah. box below to get that moon. Pretty clever.
So one thing I don't think get, we mentioned was there is a checkpoint halfway up the wall in this kingdom uh, when you climb it in the first visit. It's very advisory to avoid it, just so because there's a lot of warping to the checkpoint that they both walk to now. Uh, they are right next to each other on the map. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to accidentally select the wrong one. And you do actually need a certain amount of checkpoints in this run because yeah. you get an achievement moon for it. And that one is like directly in your way, so intuitively you might think to grab it, but it I think sense it, it makes warping so much worse and there are act there are like more than enough quick checkpoints to grab. It's yeah. best just to avoid that one entirely. I, I, th I think it's worth mentioning how much you should avoid it when uh, there are eighty five checkpoints in this game and you need A in all you need moves, and we still avoid that checkpoint. Yeah. It's just it's a very bad one. I yeah, think for this route you only need 40 because we only bother to get the first achievement move for checkpoints. Yeah. Um, getting 80 would be way too slow for darker side. Yeah, there's just too many that are out of the way. Yeah. They're just like, they're not, like, a lot of them aren't necessarily too far out of the way. It's just like, if, if, even if you have to take like a half a second to grab a checkpoint, if you do that from 40 different checkpoints, up. that adds up. Oh, some interesting movement on this timer challenge for Neo. Look, he didn't exactly do what he wanted to do, but I like the idea there. I find that this timer challenge either goes really well for me or horribly wrong. Oh, yeah. It's just there's no in-between. So now we're going to do this room in a way that just entirely skips the intended path, more or less. It's very easy to do, actually. Yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> like getting a triple jump here and just hat bouncing up to the moon, like it's not that tight at all of a jump. Yeah, honestly, this is one of those tricks that you could probably pick up this game after months of not playing, and as long as you know how to do a cat bounce, you can probably do this. Yeah, it's it's very simple, and it, it's 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 hilarious because it's probably one of the one of the longer sub areas, and you can just kind of completely skip it with a few simple jumps. Like I don't know, I don't know if you remember doing that room uh, the normal way. Oh, I remember. I actually watched someone do it uh, earlier today the normal way. I'm like, wow, this takes a lot of time. It's actually a somewhat interesting room. It's just really slow. Yeah. And here are our favorite spiny friends. Ah, yes. Uh, giving dangers a nice kiss. I also learned something about these, apparently. You can actually poke them through... You can, well, I mean, I guess you can just poke them with a the Pokeo. I actually forgot that you could... I mean, I guess that's only really if you wanted to be, do it safely, but... I kind of just forget that Pokeo can kill Spinies. Oh yeah, I guess I can. It's just I, I, just an interesting little tidbit, because the moon's called Taking Notes Between Spinies. And this, this point here is the point I was referring to earlier, where I say my muscle memory makes me jump out when I'm playing AUM. Because uh, in Dark Side, you want to just jump out, get the moon, and warp away. Oh, right. It's, it's really That's bad. That's actually tragic in AUM, yeah. It's it's muscle memory. It's the same, like, just I'm just drawing the parallel to the any percent uh, dropout muscle memory here. So this is the point you're going to see Neo just grab this shot moon and warp straight out to grab the last moon in the kingdom. The dangerous will have to grab those two Jizo moons after the shot. Yeah. Nice spin pound into the shop. One of the harder ones, personally. Yeah, it didn't even need the roll cancel to stop himself. He just went straight in. The madman. Oh. I hate. It. I feel. I feel like missing the invader. It just it becomes. Yeah. This is another one where if you if you mess up at all, it just kind of becomes really messy. Okay. Fortunately, he managed to get the second hit off pretty quickly. So that's good.
getting the jump farming in. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud. Looks like he warped to... Oh, no, he warped to the right check. So, Neo entering uh, Seaside. Uh, how do you feel about Seaside, too? Seaside, everything except for the 2D section, it's like pretty easy and consistent to me. I feel like, like before we added that 2D section in, I thought Seaside 2 was like the easiest post King Kingdom, pretty like by far. Yeah, I like, could, I could feel that. I think it, it will get better with time though. Yeah, it's just like I mentioned earlier, it's the the 8-bit sections in general in this game I really don't like, and that one in particular is just like the spacing of the jumps you need and everything is insanely annoying. For me, it's one of the necessary evils because it does cut out. Uh, a really difficult 2D lunch and jump that we used to have to do if you wanted to be fast. Yeah. So I'm definitely not going to complain about it. I mean, I like in a sense that it adds, it takes some of the challenge from like one, a couple of the harder kingdoms and adds it to one of the easier kingdoms just so it, the difficulty is a bit more spread out, yeah. <laughs> That boat was really close. Yeah, I think it took a couple tries on the ground pound there. Made the cycle. Oh. oh no, he bounced on the guy's head. This is literally like an eight second time loss. It takes him so long to pop back out of his shell if you land on him like that. It's like the most tragic thing that can happen in this kingdom. Another great thing about this kingdom is it makes the stream look really good. <laughs> Got the That's whole true, aesthetic yeah. going on. Yeah? Very thematic. Alright, Ninja's getting uh, snail skip. Snail bounce skip. Uh, so yeah, Neo just picking up a luncheon moon there, because that would be the hint art that he checked about an hour ago? Yeah, something like bit, that. Around that. Bit, bit, uh, bit less, but yeah. Yeah, the, like a reason this kingdom is just so consistent and easy for me is because fish movement in general, I think it, it's kind of hard to mess it up a whole lot. You can yeah. bonk, but outside of that, there's not really like too much that is going to mess you up. I mean, most of the swimming in this se in this particular section is just in wide open areas. Yeah, and so most of the time loss can just... basically come from like just either bonking or just taking unintentional damage. Outside of that, there's not really too much that can go wrong in this large swimming section. There is a strat you can do in this kingdom with Joy-Cons though, which is quite swaggy. Which uh, would add a moon to this kingdom that we don't typically get. But uh, it, I have messed with that one, it's quite tricky. It requires using some flowers along the surface of the water and doing a down throw to hit a scarecrow. And then uh, quickly grabbing a moon that appears. But yeah, I mean, even even then, that's not really. It doesn't really add any big risks to this kingdom.
this right here that you see Neo so, doing, collecting these notes, it's like... This is... This is the bane of my damageless uh, nightmares. Yeah. It's it's you very got... easy to just accidentally knock a Koopa somewhere and just it's before you know it, it's all over the place. He's taken he's taken two hits already. It's just it's, yeah. It's so having to go through pain. two health refills in this section that's like five seconds of time loss right there. That just seems to happen all the time. Oh, dangerous on one health. Gotta be careful here. Gotta be careful while still going fast enough to collect all of the notes in time. Definitely a high stress situation. Oh. I think he should be okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Whew. There we go. It's fine. While he did take two points of damage, he did only have to go through one refill, though. So that's yeah. Unfair. Yeah, taking them consecutively like that is gonna lose you less time than. Taking two hits like Neo did. Uh, Neo doing a little bit of uh, intro. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. I guess he kind of flicked the trigger a little, uh, by accident. Confirming there that the eel can, in fact, come out to play. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much wrapping up her seaside now. Not much left to see. Uh, Danger's getting the camera minute there. Yeah, looks like uh, he'll be able to come out damageless from this. Yep. Yep. Very, Very nice. nicely done. I still have a bit of trouble with that, actually. I, I can have him not pop out when I go in, but when I'm coming back out, he uh, sometimes he just catches me right as I'm exiting. Yeah, I have the same issue. Plus, that's a very easy little corridor to fish bonk in, and any fish bonk whatsoever is going to mean missing the cycle and taking the fish. I never thought to just land on that rabbit, the gushing. Yeah, that's the approach I take. I don't know if it's optimal, but it's very easy. Consistent every time. The gushing just has like a bigger hitbox than Mario does, so it's easier to hit the rabbit before it starts running away, I think. Yeah, and if it's already running, it's very fast. You catch it pretty easily. So as you can see with Neo, uh, he went through the painting to get to Wooded Kingdom, and it's going to drop him off right near the entrance to that second boss fight. So this is the point where he's going to achieve peace in Wooden Kingdom. Only one that they skipped first visit. Danger's following closely behind him here. It's four snipe shots. Very it's nice. Nice shots by dangers as well. I find this is another nice little soothing, relaxing boss fight. Oh yeah? It's a nice little two hour break, or break two hours in. Rather. Yeah, I can imagine taking advantage of that break. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know how I feel about Talk Drift. He's kind of... Not really that threatening. Unless you clip through the floor. Well, I mean, yeah, but then who's the real threat? Talk Drift or the ground? 
Uh, I think it's Torque Drift exerting its immense pressure. <laughs> Scaring you so much that you <laughs> flip out of balance. At the very least, the least is not only happened to me. So scary, it makes you defy physics. Dangerous has a very fast play right now. He actually has a really fast play. But he's bouncing around right there. We can go! So now with that multi mute collected, world peace actually has been achieved. Which is just great, honestly. And it is true world peace because we did cheer up the bench friend. Exactly. I mean honestly, I wouldn't have even I wouldn't even consider this a real category otherwise. Exactly. So now we're going to play any percent for about 30 seconds. This part always feels weird to me. Very weird. It's like you're in the Twilight Zone doing this <laughs> movement two hours into a run. And now we're going to capitalize on the entire reason that we did Wooded first in this run. Yeah, slightly faster movement rolling over to this hint art, as opposed to rolling to it from the Odyssey. Literally the only reason Wooded is done for a lake. Oh, that was it, and now it's over. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, to be more specific on why it's checked here, right, so if you do Lake first, you will go to Sand 2 before Wooded 2. However, rolling over to it's faster in this in, in this than getting it first visit. So we have to go to Wooded first, uh, because that will put Wooded before Sand on the revisit list. To allow us to check it in the second visit, as opposed to having to check it in the first. I actually don't like this uh, little segment of movement here with the tree box and the tank sh tank wall here. It feels very. I, I don't know what is fast. It's kind of yeah. It's hard because it's hard to be optimal because of the camera, especially after breaking that box man. I just always feel slow climbing a pole. That too, yeah. I look like a dropped input there. I think it's interesting that so many people do that jump over the railing like that. Dangerous just did. I do it over the railing because it's just higher up so I have more leniency. I've never actually tried to do it that way. It seems like it would be awkward, but I guess it's not. It, it's it's harder because you can bonk on the rail. Right. If you can if you can do it without doing without going that high, it's probably better. You're probably better off doing it that way. Yeah, I just run off the top of the ramp instead. Like before, right before the railing. So I think both of them, I, I imagine PB is still possible for both of them. 
looking at this pace? Um... I actually don't know what my pace is like. I can give you any. I could, I could take a look. Well, I know my, they're they're somewhat close to what my pace is. Like they're a little behind my pace at this point, but they also have different room counts, so I don't know exactly. Yeah, that's true. Because I do all the mushroom stuff early, so. Oh, that's true as well. Yeah. Hard to say, but still at worst they're on like mid 320s pace. I would imagine. Oh, that was interesting. Dangerous ground pounded, but only got one hit on the. He didn't fully break the nut as he ground pounded through it. Kind of caught the clip to the edge of it. Only got one hit. Oh, that value dive was Jeez, on another was... level. <laughs> That was something else. I didn't even know that was possible. That was... That was, he dove like a 90 degree angle from where he was aiming. That's insane. I do feel like Dangerous is actively fighting the game right now. Yeah, it does seem like it a little bit. At least it was generous enough to turn the camera though. It's really nice when the camera turns for that moon. Yeah. Because if it doesn't, then you kind of have to kind of you kind of have to roll blind towards the pipe player for a little bit. And Neo's on a bird cycle here, so we'll see if he can execute all of this cleanly and get to the bird in time. Danger's just having a nice pipe player as well. Uh, he does it a lot uh, cleaner than I do, actually. So, credit to him for that. And Dinger's also on his bird cycle here. Oh. He's fine. Had, yeah, just had a little bit of an awkward angle for the nut. I, he had a lot of trust in that dive. I, I, I was a bit scared. Yeah. <laughs> See if Neo goes for the Ooh, dangerous spicy the triple jump straight into yeah. the moon. No cap bounce Neo's, required. I think Neo's so. gonna go for the uh, timer. Yeah. Not even turning his camera to see what the third is. He, he did. Uh, he did win the shard. Uh, grab. Oh, okay. Happened. Took a little peek. Yeah, he's so he's plenty of time for the bird. Not sure why he's not grabbing the other moon in the meantime, though. I guess just for safety or something. Just to kind of make sure he's got a good position for it. Yeah. In case he misses it. Because sometimes I've had it where I just kind of throw my cap at the bird and completely miss it. Yeah, that definitely can happen. The birds have interesting hitboxes. To say the least. I was kind of worried he was just going to roll off that ledge. Uh, I didn't see if Dane just checked actually for the timer challenge. Uh, the bird, sorry. Looks like I can't even see the bird. Um, yeah, when he he's, the he's timer got challenge, plenty of time. More than okay. I think I saw it uh, way, way back there. So yeah, he's plenty fine. He's also going to get into position a little early. Oh. That was yeah, I did, I, I, a little I bit of a risky approach to hit the bird that way. Might I definitely be. don't blame you, Rogan, for just like getting it first before the other moon. It's just, it, I, in my mind, that would be safer. Neo gonna capture the bullet, William, here. Uh, it's gonna get that nice. Nope. Unfortunately, not the clip today. I've not been able to recreate that ever. I've. I've had it a few times. I flew uh, through that ceiling one time on accident, and I, I always try to do it again, but I've never been successful. It's it's a weird one. I don't really feel like there is a way to just kind of get it without lucking into it. I mean, I'm sure you could probably find a way, but no one's really looking. The issue is we don't know exactly what causes it. I think. Yeah, kind of hoping that a couple um, ideas. Kind of hoping that down the line when the tools are there, 
I'm just trying to get nice. more insight. If it was made consistent, because it actually is a pretty nice time save. It's like... Yeah. That would be a time save in... No, I was going to say it would be a time save in two rooms in AUM, but we don't get Cappy in the other room. Right. Yeah, it would definitely be a time save, because you can just... It lets you skip going around the entire wall, which is Especially nice. if you can clip through the back wall instead of the ceiling, because when I did yeah. it on accident, I went through the ceiling. Um, yeah, and you just kind of dove into the rocks above. Oh, no. Taking a spill. I feel like that's another time loss that feels a lot worse than it actually is. That's probably like 10 seconds or something that he lost there. Which in the grand scheme of things isn't too terrible. So Neo is in Sand 2, which... I don't know. I don't, I don't think Sand 2 uses bad as it used to be. It can be pretty brutal, I think. Yeah, it's just that I remember having the sinking ruins room in that route. Dangerous. Oh, it looked like he almost was going to bonk there. That ground pound jump dive. Get up to the top platform. Well, he didn't. He's on his way to sinking as well. Yeah, that, uh, that sinking platform room. Not... It's definitely not one of my favorites in the old route. I was very happy to cut it out once we realized it was borderline and pretty slow. I don't know what track that was he just played. I think it was 58. Which is the optimal one to scroll to. Yeah, yeah it was 58. That's the one before Robo Brood, so I'm not sure what that is. I believe it's... Well, actually, I don't know. Well, if Dangerous does the same one, I guess we'll find out. I know it's one I don't like, because I try to avoid picking that song. But that Captain Toad Moon, um, there's like 11 songs, I think, all in a row that you can pick, and they all work. Get you the yeah, moon. It's, it's basically any boss, and all the bosses are categorized together. Right. Almost. I know it was unintended, but that cat return jump was quite nice. <laughs> or at least it, it seemed unintended, I should say. Dangerous. Going with the scroll from the bottom. The 61. Pound, as usual. Oh, yep. <laughs> I've had times where he kind of just gets right on top of it. To the point where it's just kind of... You have to wait for him to walk away. Yeah, it's very annoying. I'm a little disappointed. Neo not even going for his patented uh, capture juggling with the, 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 the bullet bill. You know, something tells me that he probably thought about it for you. Oh, he fell down there. I didn't see what happened exactly. I'm not actually sure either, to be quite honest with you. Uh, maybe he... behind a bullet bill cycle. Oh, and that one actually crashed in the wall, so we have to wait for yet another cycle. We need this bullet bill to travel out to this stone block really far out here. And, uh... Out with motion controls as well as a little trick to increase bullet bill speed. This is very lenient. Um, which, if you like, release the dash button after your first shake for the bullet bill and just kind of keep shaking, it will actually go. It will actually go faster than if you were to hold the button down. So it helps with certain areas to just get more speed or like more distance travel.
And I think... Neo missed the bird cycle, so he's gonna have to wait for it to loop back around. Mostly just due to falling down in that bullet build section, uh, causing him to be late for this, but he was like almost a full cycle behind. So the bird is kind of like not in a terrible spot. So admittedly, this this jump here with the Jaxi runes, I never really thought it would make it into a route. I remember doing this months ago in a bingo. Um, <laughs> people were impressed. I just I never really thought it would have any application. I guess. Yeah, just it's uh, Jaxi skips nature. That's, I think that's like one of the more recent additions in Darker Side. I mean, it's been a while since it got yeah, added, it, it, but it's still one of the more recent changes that have been made. Yeah. It's been around. I don't think there are any. any uh, I don't really remember the last thing that got added to Darker Side, to be honest. Um, I think some of the most recent stuff was like moving the Jaxi moves to the first visit, like some reorders. But that's definitely one of the more more recent actual new moves that got added to the route for sure. Camera was not cooperating with Danger's though. Uh, I can't actually... I didn't see how many bites that was for Nia. But it didn't seem like it was very long at all. Yeah, hopefully the game will be nicer to Dangers here, starting with this fishing. Oh, he almost missed the Jaxi platform. Really hoping that uh, we get some better luck with this fish. I don't know if it was even a good idea to say that, but uh, I just I feel. I couldn't even really see the fish there in his screen. Yeah, it's it's really hard to see the sandfish. Didn't I didn't actually see that though. I... Just based on time alone, that was maybe like third bite or something. Yeah. No fish in the run. The most notorious one remains, the final boss. So, Round Tower is actually one of my favorite 2D sections in the game. It's one of my least favorite. <laughs> we have such conflicting taste. <laughs> Why don't you like it? I just find it really difficult to get the optimal, like, bullet bill bounce cycle to make it up as fast as possible. I just kind of like the structure. I think it, it's, it's interesting to me. But... Also, I care less about the difficulty of the trick of the trick itself than the trick itself. I think it looks cool. It's definitely one of the cooler looking sections if done perfectly. Might have been on a weird cycle there, with having to be either wait for the bullet bills to get ahead of him, or take damage. I kind of like that you can talk to Peach from down here. <laughs> I'm not sure why. It just it's convenient. Yeah. Oh, I'm 
surprised he got wow. that. Wow. <laughs> I feel like yeah. Was. That was that was that was clutch, but not quite so obvious clutch. Normally, what I do there, if I if I ground pound once and I miss, I just go for the, the downwards cap throw towards it. And yeah, yeah. Again, push on it yeah, further. Yeah, I thought for sure it was gonna run away from him there. Will we see the uh, the legendary timer challenge, Stra? Yep. I like this one. Landing on that scarecrow is <laughs> amusingly probably the hardest part of that trick. Yeah, way more difficult than it looks. So. That was like pretty clean. Yeah. The only thing you could have done to improve that is if you rolled into a spin pound rather than the ground pound, but I mean, it's like. Oh, Neo going out of his way to bop the sheep. <laughs> he has sheep. to bless the run. Yeah, that, that sheep has been known to curse runs if you just let it sit there without showing him who's boss. The way Dangerous approached that timer challenge is going to be fast for him to just go straight to the pylon and wait for the hat to come back to him. Yeah, to be fair, if you actually miss the Scarecrow, typically it would have been faster to wait anyway. Uh, because it's just going to despawn by the time you get over there. We'll see, it looks like Dangerous is on a good line. Oh no! Oh. That's not bode well. Oh my, that was a bit worrisome. World Runners getting approaching the end of Sand Kingdom. We'll head to Metro where Neo will get his other extra moon that he needs and that will put him back to being two moons ahead of dangers so correct me if i'm wrong was it not you who did this death war first it was me yeah a curb is special more you know yeah there's like i think there's four spots on the darker side where we death warp it's did you a... discover them all by accident no 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 it's just the same principle every time. Yeah, it's just it's like fun. Dying. If you, yeah, if you, if you like, literally can die immediately, it's better. Yeah, but it's rare that that's gonna happen. Yeah, very situational. And I'm not sure. We might see Neo go through like a different bit of a. Of an ordering of like units of this kingdom that most people would do. How so? Um, there are two sections that he sometimes decides to flip around to avoid like bad taxi cycles. Um, interesting. But we'll also see him get a moon that dangers won't pick up here from earlier. Uh, he's Neo yeah. is gonna get his uh, shop moon here because he did not pick up the moon in loss. Uh, that Dangers got with the Gliadon earlier. I think he is just doing normal order. Yeah, with with the shot moon, Neo will be two moons ahead, and that difference will remain until 
Mushroom Kingdom, which is basically the very last thing before the darker side. So we'll have this two moon discrepancy for the last hour or so of this run, for the majority of the last hour. This down throw does not yet, and that's exactly why I don't like this down throw. <laughs> He uh, really likes the skewer. That's Maybe. one that I don't seem to have trouble with. It's kind of interesting, I think, that they're like... Oh, oh he's not getting the shot moon. Interesting. Maybe lunch in the shop? Perhaps, yeah. I mean, there are definitely plenty of backups that he could go for. Potentially. Uh -huh. I don't know... I, I would imagine that he knows what he's doing. But it's also somewhat possible that he is so used to getting the twist and turn moon that he forgets that he failed it and didn't go for it. Oh, I hope not, because that's going to be a real problem later. But I would imagine he knows what he's doing and has a, just has a different backup in mind. Oh dear. RC okay. car doing RC car things. <laughs> so yeah, I guess as of now, uh, Neo is still just one moon ahead of Dangers. Also with a slight time lead. Pretty much synced moon grab there, almost, not quite. I don't right. think that's gonna yeah, that was very far off. I actually thought he was gonna go over that. Uh, Danger's gonna try his luck at the slots. What are the chances? Uh, punching the numbers in now. <laughs> I think I see everybody do, uh, like, towards Peach the way that Neo is doing here, but um, I don't do that. I, I do it slow. Yeah, definitely optimal to just land on that box. It's been found directly down to this box. Uh, Danger should get it. I didn't see it home, but he should get it anyway. It was close enough. Going for a little bit of safety. Being extra careful with the bunny, hitting it twice with this cap. I, don't, I, I don't blame him for that. <laughs> This is easily, like, if you miss that bunny, it's one of the worst ones to catch up to, because he hops between the rooftops constantly. Yeah, and even if you hit, oh. it's true. Even if you hit, um... Ooh. Neo just barely getting the timer challenge. He got caught on the people there for quite a while. Oh, is Danger's gonna do it the way I do it? Do you use the pole fling? Yeah, I just fling the pole. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're, if you're gonna be up top there, it's better at that point to pull flank for sure. It's probably like a second or two of difference at that point. I don't know, maybe a bit more. So the reason we don't get that moon that Neo just ground pounded first visit is because you gotta wait for this dog here, anyways. Oh. And the dog actually took a long time because the bird was already on the tail end of the cycle there. Where is it going? The camera was just doing camera things though. So yeah, well, while you're waiting for the dog, because he has to dig up the first spot, which just gives coins, and then you have to bring him over to the second spot, which has the moon. Uh, while you're waiting for him to dig in both those spots, it's better just grab those two moons. So that you're not just standing around, waiting. <laughs>
I like this sub area that Neo's going into now. It's all right. I just I get really annoyed when the, the ogre guy hits me. Well, don't let the ogre guy hit you then. <laughs> Ugh. Football kick, good measure. If you watch Neo now, he's gonna do a nifty little thing after he collects this moon on the top. He's gonna do the scooter timer challenge and then kind of run off the edge and drop the scooter down and then hop off of it in midair and drop onto a trash can which has a moon. And then he'll drop further down, land on the scooter, and use the scooter to get another moon. I'm so proud of him. I actually have been really struggling with this movement lately. I, I feel like I just kind of sit on the scooter too long and then I miss the, the, the dumpster. Or as I would call it, the bin. Ooh, nice little side slide into the parking spot there. Another tricky bird that Neo's gonna try to hit. Probably try to land on the light post. Yeah. A little ledge grab, but he gets it. Oh, Ooh. just barely gets the bird. Oh, oh! He misses the moon. He's gonna have to climb back up to That's... the top of the lamp post. Mario really likes to hug the top of that pole. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I am still curious what Neo's gonna do for his moon. Neo with the slick moving movement through the first part of that sub area. I like it. Yeah. I think that's actually why I do. I'll try to go over the top. Gets up there. <laughs> Look what she dangers the idiot. Gets the bird very, very cleanly. Which is good. That warp right there is one of the spots where I always have to kind of fight the urge to deposit my moves into the Odyssey. Just do it anyway. So what do you think? Is Neo gonna get fast cycle and poison wave room? <laughs> oh! Oh no! Oh no! That room is actually there's so many different ways you can die. Oh, and Neo's about to go for Lake Fish, the worst of them all. But it looks like he at least has it fighting his line, third bite or so. That's pretty good for Lake Fish. Didn't spend too long running into the wall aimlessly. So Neo had pretty decent fish luck in this run overall. Yeah, it was all right. I don't think he had worse than the third bite on any of them. I feel like my fish looks pretty good most of the time. Yeah, it's just, it's definitely more common to get like a first or second bite than like anything else. I've Small found. blessings, I suppose. Yeah.
Oh, Nia, Nia missed the bird. I think Danger's got a first bite there. Did Nia miss the bird? Did he? I, I looked over, I saw him long jump towards the bird. I didn't see him grab it. I don't know if he already had it or if he missed it. If you do miss it, it can loop around right after the moon. You can grab it in front of the Odyssey, so we'll see if he needs to go for that. Yeah, looks like he's going to. Yep, there the bird is, waiting. Oh, he's oh no! Okay. Okay, nice. <laughs> I didn't, she didn't know about that backup. Yeah, the only problem with that is sometimes he'll perch himself over near where the moon rock is. And you'll have to go over and like get close to him to get him moving again. But right, most of the time, he'll just wrap around to the Odyssey right at the perfect time. <laughs> So this is the patented WOW room. Very nice. Yeah, that that wasn't like the absolute fastest you can do it, but that was like... I call that like the half cycle. Yeah. It was like, it was technically the same cycle as the fastest way, but just slightly slower. But yeah, very clean room. That's like the best you can typically hope for. and just tackles the wow room. Oh, I've never seen it done that way before. <laughs> so he was like, I think he was like the full cycle behind the optimal, so like a half cycle behind what Neo did, basically. Which is still pretty good. Oh my lord, he almost bumped on that ledge. Much to say about what's going on in Lake right now. Lake is very uh dull, I would say, kingdom. I prefer the word peaceful. I prefer the word dull. <laughs> it's, it, it's okay, it's not dull, I guess. It's it's just kinda the sub areas are interesting. I just feel like the main area is kinda there isn't much going on, I guess. It's sneaky it's though, because it's still kind of difficult. But yeah, you know, I feel like it lulls you into a false sense of security sometimes. There's definitely a lot of jumps that you can fail in Lake, just the hub area. Just I would say specifically in this area that Neo's in now, just kind of around the plaza. Best sub area in the kingdom. I like both of them. Except I don't like going for those ledge grab strats. I hate this room. I actually like this room. I hate it. I used to hate it, but ever since I stopped going for the ledge grab, I kind of like it now. 
Do it with the purple coins. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't like it with the purple coins. That's a different story. Uh, this room sucks. <laughs> it's always impressive when it's done... Even, honestly, it's always impressive when it's done without dying. For me. Oh my, he was very close to those fuzzies. Soaring through luncheon. I'm gonna break bust open that moon rock very soon. This visit to luncheon is actually very short. I kind of because of the old route, I expect it to be like Drag. long and difficult, but you actually don't really do all that much on this visit in particular. I find this was one of those uh, other spots in the run where I fight I have to fight the urge to like uh, from that salt moon just go to the fort flicking room. I have to remember to break the moon rock. Ah, uh, yeah. Just because you go from pillar to flag to sword, it's just very, it's very much the same. I don't think Neo did a single up throw in that room. Maybe he is, uh, incapable. A lot of people just really don't like up throws or down throws. I use them, but I don't like them. I don't love them, but I find that they're, it's at least generally consistent enough to, that I'm not too worried about using them. Fortunately, uh, Danger's not dying there. Man, he should save himself. Neo coming up on one of my personal scariest jumps in this run. Yeah, nice little jump using the timer challenge platform to get to Captain Toad, as opposed to doing some really slow stuff where you grab a Potobo and like swim over to him, or just like jump back up and falling to the top again and get down. On him. Basically, you gotta time this so that your attack Ooh. comes back to you. He almost gets sniped by a fireball. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen that actually happen to uh, Bailey before. Wow. Very nice. Makes the jump very cleanly with a lot of room for our, a lot of wiggle room, I guess. Yeah, so basically, he timed the triple jump there so that the average challenge was disappearing, like the platform was disappearing, and his hat would come back to him just at the perfect time to throw it and get a cat bounce. And now he's gonna dump all of his moves. So, I'm not a mathematician. I do believe this will put him at like 40. around 400, like 402? Yeah, I don't know the exact number he'll be at, but somewhere around 400. I think 402 is. He didn't correct. buy it. He didn't. He still hasn't got that extra moon yet, so it could be 401 maybe. Or no, I think it's gonna be less than 400. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was he, way off. He didn't get all the mushroom ones. I think my- oh, that's right, yeah. My- I think my moon dump is exactly 400. Yeah, mine is. Mine is, as well. And that's with, I guess, extra mushroom ones, a extra metro shop, and without tiles, and like, the ceiling. Dangers makes the jump too, very nice. Needed the little rainbow soon, but, uh, makes it damageless, which is all that really matters. So 
Actually, if I have to guess, I would say Neo's on some kind of, like... 323 or 324 pace. I honestly couldn't even guess this early. Oh, he's going for the safe strat here. Oh, wait, is this. This is gonna be his backup yeah, move yeah. then. Of course, yeah, that makes sense. Because I believe he said this only lost like five to doing yeah. the jump. So you can, you can do a thing where you like long jump or triple jump or across the fog and land on one of the little danger signs and get another jump off of those to get to the moon rock. But if you're going to use the Paragoomba, which is, you know, intended, uh, that moon that Neo just got becomes fast enough for the route. So if you you're going to do this, see. then it's a good idea to get that moon. But if you're not going to use the Paragoomba, then that moon is way too slow. Dane just has 395. That is correct. Right, yeah, it sh should be. Because Neo's two moons that... Well, Neo was... Yeah, one, no, yeah, yeah, Neo should have been one moon ahead. So now Neo is two moons ahead because Dangers will not get So we'll, Neo. I assume, yeah, assume Dangers is going to do the jump then. You would think. Yeah. So we might get to see it here. Looks look good. Oh, <gasps> he, he went too right. far to the right there. And just barely bonked on the sign. I feel like that dive was quite immediate as well. I, I like to wait a little bit before doing that dive, the second dive. See, now he's gonna go straight for the Paragumba. That was just a smart decision. Yeah, don't wanna get hung up on that for too long, I don't think. Ooh. He almost got Bob. <laughs> if, if, really... if, you, if you get hit by Spiny in this room at all, you're probably going to die. Yeah, you just you lose don't, control. You lose control. Like, you don't have any control over whether or not you roll or not. Like, you have to roll in this room. The game just forces you into the rolling animation. And if a Spiny hits you and redirects you to be facing to the left or right, you can't stop your roll to shift your direction back to normal. You're just going to roll straight off the edge. Oh! Dangerous! Had oh, too much no. momentum. Just went flying off of the platform after he grabbed the key. And we are kind of getting into crunch time for this run, so mistakes like that are really going to hurt at this point. We're looking at maybe about a half hour left at this point. Ooh, I, I don't know why that threw me off the way he dove with that camera angle there. I just, I thought he was going to die. So he is actually, Neo is on another bird cycle right now. We mentioned. Should be coming up soon.
Yeah, pretty much in perfect. Oh, the bird juked him a little bit, but he caught up to it pretty quickly. Yeah, he was on good pace for that bird cycle till the juke. I always call that bird the, the NFL running back. Danger's now also on this bird cycle. You get it as cleanly as Neo did. Yeah, I guess that's true. I never really think about the that. It's weird because usually when I'm on bird cycle, I do I think about it constantly, but I never really think about the cat one just because it's so long. Like you just kind of go through a lot to get before you get to it. I mean, I don't think it's really any longer than the wooded one. I guess. I, I don't know, it's just, it's a weird one for me. I guess it's because, maybe it's also because the bird is, like, out in the open and you can just fly to it. Yeah. I don't know, it's, it's a weird one. Like, it's, it's a lot harder to entirely miss that cycle. You can always just fly and catch up to it. Uh, Neo is entering the safest place on Earth. All I'm going to say is expect a death here from at least one runner. It almost it's just, always it's just happens. At the, it's just at the happiest place on Earth. Why not both? I mean, look at Glideon dancing. He looks pretty happy. Yeah, he's chilling. Peach seems pretty happy as well. So, why don't you uh, summarize your thoughts on Lost? Uh, that would require some words that I probably don't want to use in this setting. I personally like it. I, I may be uh, in the very, very slim minority. AKA the only one. <laughs> it's, I mean, Neo likes it. But, I mean, that is because it's his own devilish creation. That's true. Yes, take some kind of sick pleasure in having created this route. I think it's it's very cool when it's done well. Of course. But when it's done, it's it but has done anyone well, ever it? really done it well? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you see, doing a good job right now. So far, still a long way to go. <laughs> this is very true. Whoa. Oh my gosh. A shard giving him some trouble. Oh, that's one of the one the dives I really hate. Oh my god, Neo. That is so <laughs> risky. <laughs> I'm doing that in future. I don't trust that at all. I do like a roll cancel. And the, 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 the hat goes towards the hat, Cappy goes towards the final shelter. Come on, wiggle this, let's see it. Yes. That was a pretty good wiggler list of notes. Yeah, that's right. Not perfect, but definitely good enough. He's going for it. Oh my oh. goodness. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. There was there was certainly an attempt made. <laughs> oh, he missed the rabbit, unfortunately. That was way too wide. Is that gonna hit you? Yeah. There goes our perfect lost kingdom. Someday someone will do it perfectly. Maybe. Yeah, right. Maybe. 
It was pretty good though. Uh, I shouldn't say that right now. I should wait. But... There's, there's still Uncle Amiibo to get past. <laughs> Uncle Amiibo, the classic. He almost took a death when he dove the wrong direction and bonked into the Wiggler. Yeah. If he would have actually like bonked a, a bad way, he could have fallen down. And died. Uh, Uncle Amiibo skip. Nice. I'm waiting for the day we actually use Uncle Amiibo for something in this speedrun. Since the day I quit. No, no, not using him. I mean, like, using the actual, mo like, character. Like a jump off him or something. Not actual Amiibo, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not that bad. Dangerous going for the Wiggler. You know, now that I think about it, did Neo get an extra capture for not doing the Wiggler? Did he capture the Fire Piranha when he did Lanterns? No. I don't think so. Wait, did he? I don't think he did. He tells me that it's worth capturing. So I it don't is know. optimally worth capturing, but I don't think he actually does it. He, the only thing he might have gotten is Big Chain Chomp. I, I didn't see if he got that, but I'm pretty sure he didn't get the letter in Metro Kingdom. Uh, I didn't see him get it, no. And I'm pretty sure he didn't get the Fire Piranha Plant. Maybe he's just winging it. Dude. He definitely needs one extra somewhere. Hopefully he got the big chain shot. He could still grab Yoshi, but Yoshi's a pretty slow capture, so I... I wouldn't expect Neo to be planning to do that from the start. Yeah. yeah. It's possible he's forgotten though and he could just like do it now. Yeah. But I mean, I don't feel like Neo would forget a capture of all things. Right. I'm assuming that he grabbed the chain chop, but we'll see, I guess. He's just got one trip to luncheon. And then he'll be heading to Mushroom to collect the last of the 500 moons. Oh, Neo not going for the fast strat in this room. Shocked. Shocked and appalled. Hey man, the stress are hard. Yeah. Oh dear. I think he can survive this if he if he reacts well. For, well I mean, he had time. Okay. To, but yeah, yeah. That's I think I think if, if I think if time hadn't frozen there, he might not have reacted well enough. But I think he because he had the time to think about it, that probably helped out a lot. Oh, that's I don't so think far that away. Is that gonna work? work. Nope. I was gonna Fair. say maybe if he, maybe if he waited for them to get closer, it might have worked, but. I don't think it would have either was, way, yeah, just it, based it, it, on it, it how was, the half flew back. It was, a, it was a stretch. I feel like it's not appreciated enough that we roll on a giant coin of cob with a stack of Goombas in this game. That's kind of just glossed over. Hmm? What Neo just did. I missed what you said, I mean. He rolls on a giant corn of cob with a sack of Goombas. 
We, we kind of just to let that happen without saying anything about it. I mean... Sometimes you just gotta let things be. I guess. I hate this time of challenge. I do too. It's actually... not even difficult, it's just kind of... I used to die on it all the time. Yeah. I, I, I still die sometimes on it, like really rarely, but... I just kind of bonk on one and then, or I'll fall through the one whole gap. I'm just like, well, there goes my life. I guess. Because it puts you, it will put you back at the pipe as well. I believe. Uh, yeah. Neo gonna try his luck on the slots. I can't hear it, but Neo is listening to an absolute banger of a tune right now. <laughs> Which Dangerous will hopefully be listening to soon as well. <gasps> oh gosh. Dude, I, I have my input dropped on that. Oh, not my input, but my jump. My jump. I just lose my momentum on that jump so often. I thought that was gonna happen. Uh, Neo throwing away the normal turn. It doesn't want that. performing an acrobatic show for grabbing that move. Which, I mean, I, I will admit to being a victim of many of those acrobatic shows sometimes when I just can't seem to get Mario to go forward. We do have the the banger playing uh, the dangers now, which is nice. Yes, must be noted that picking that song is entirely optimal, and if you don't pick it, then your run is banned from the leaderboards. Yep. Uh, can confirm this is a verify. Turn up throw for danger, just gonna jump back up there and right. drop it in the pot. I, uh, I know that feeling all too well. I feel like I miss that every time. Oh, Neo getting bopped by some large vegetables. I believe they are peppers. And on his way to Mushroom Kingdom, the final kingdom before the darker side. Looks like the remainder of the 500 moons here. Many of which will be all the achievement moons that he's been working towards this whole run. Exactly 31 of those. We are all very proud of him. Especially Toda. Oh, 
one also uh, one of the more final recent changes was uh, moving jam and toad to mushroom too so you get to listen to some jam and music while uh, talking to toadette too you mean some slightly less jam and music than the default peach's castle no i absolutely meant what i said <laughs> I'm sorry, I like Cascade 8 bit. It's one of my favorite tracks in the game. Oh my god, I thought Neo only had one seed planted for a second. I got scared. Oh, that could be a problem. <laughs> that definitely would have made things a bit more interesting. I don't know what you would have done there. I guess 2D well notes. Oh no, oh no, no. I was going to say it's an achievement moon as well, but we're fine on those, I think. Yeah, we get an extra one. That would have been very interesting. To say the least. Oh, here it is. The second jam. Moon in the game for Neo. I mean, it's it's terrifying to be honest. Oh, it's actually terrifying. Oh, <gasps> oh, we almost no. saved it. I actually believed. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, the sa it's deja vu. Oh, he saved it that time, at least. <laughs> oh, there you go. I'm surprised that actually worked, to be honest. Me too. But, uh, thankfully, he can escape from this uh, nightmarish landscape. I guess it's not that out of the way, actually, because, I mean, Yoshi's right here, because he does it later. Well, yeah, it's just... The only reason I mentioned it was slow is because you have to kind of double hit it. I know. I just, I'm just saying, like, uh, if he was missing a capture, it's not the worst thing. Yeah. Definitely a pretty quick backup. And he'll be able to run up straight to it instead of getting the tiles and the flight from the ceiling moon like Dangerous will have to do. So that's where the moon count kind of equalizes. So Neo with a definitive lead right now. Um, definitely not too big of a lead that a death and dark side couldn't swing, so it's still very much a race. However, Neo is the dark side IL champion. That's very true. But even champions can fall. Dangerous with the first try, Goomba Jump nice. to make up some time. Quite a bit of time, actually. It's a good half a minute. I'm uh, moving at half a minute. At least 20 seconds, though. Because I remember Neo telling me every failure was 15 seconds. <laughs> That's why I tell myself every time I go up to Goomba Jump, I'm like, it's just 15 seconds. It's just 15 seconds. It works. And then I don't fail it. Uh, Dangers also didn't bonk on the door, worth knowing as well. Having some trouble with the camera, though. I have this happen sometimes. I just can't get my motion to to work. What? Not sure what was happening there. The 
the joys of motion controls, I guess, right? What do you mean? Motion controls are perfect and they are the future. It's just like VR is the future of video gaming. What do you what do you mean? You make it you sound very sarcastic right now. Not at all. Also, pick Close attention to the, the hot first-person camera strats. Zooming into first person each time you talk to Toadette saves like some something like less than half a second. But since you're clicking 31 moves here, it adds up. Things like roughly 12 seconds of time save if you do it perfectly every time for all of these. I'm punching time. in half a second multiplied by 31, my calculator came out with the result a lot. <laughs> it's definitely one of those little time saves that literally anyone can do and it saves a lot of, well, not a lot of time, but a, a decent enough amount of time that you should do it. Just because it's so easy. And cost you, it doesn't really cost you anything to, fuck, uh, to mess up. Like, I think if you mess it up, you can kind of just, when you're in first person, if you like adjust your camera towards Toadette, it will still work. It's kind of weird. Like, yeah, Neo has all the moves he needs. Why is he walking? Is he short? He must be. I guess. Let me see. His... Yeah, he had three. He had, he had, uh, six. In the Odyssey is his final number, so he must be short because he's got three on the final row. Yeah, so he... His coin count is more than good enough. That's not an issue. Um, maybe it was the capture. Yeah. Wouldn't surprise me. What? Well, could have been. Don't know. Find out. Hopefully uh, he can give us some insight, maybe. That does give dangers like a bit of catch up time because if I mean if Neo does mess up in darker side. Yeah, like Neo's obviously still ahead, but um his leniency is much smaller now. Because like basically before if he if he took a death like really early on in darker side, then he still would have been ahead, but now it's might be pretty much any death's gonna make this close. Assuming Dangerous has all of his achievements. She should wind up with 66 moons at the end here, I think, if he has all of them. Right, is Neo's race to win if he can have a clean Darker Side dungeon? Good start, gets the nice vector straight up to the top platform there of the moving stones. Oh. Ooh. Bopped by the Goomba. Yeah. Goomba's just not letting him have any fun in this run, apparently. We'll see how safe Neo plays it. He could get a backup. Um, health. Oh, uh, yeah. If he feels he needs it. Yeah, he will go for it. Definitely a good play, I would say. 
Yeah, the, the, the smart play for the position right now. And I'm gonna take this section a little slowly as well, trying not to take any damage. Yeah, definitely playing it super safe here, not, probably knowing he has a big enough lead that if he just takes it slow and gets through it without a death, he will take home the win. Going for the fuzzy cycle. Makes it through. Ooh. Very clean. He is the dark side champion. I think he's like the only person who goes for that. In the I kind of want to practice it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. So what you'll probably see dangers do is you can use an upper to just go up to the top of that area and skip going through that water section. It's a lot easier, but Technically, it is slower optimally. Oh, Neo almost rolled off the edge there. Yikes. I'm worried about Danger's health as well right now. You will definitely be getting this hard. Almost took damage. Oh, oh no, that is the most tilting mistake for me in this dungeon. If he just took the hit of damage, but still landed in the little fire pit there, he would have been fine. I think he would have taken that. Yeah, he's gonna play super safe now. Probably go for the backup part around the wall. Me having a bit of trouble with the down throw straight here. Not going for the backup part. Oh boy. I, I kind of don't blame him for this play, actually. Yeah, he kind of just has to... Bolt. Yeah. Go as fast as he can. Although, at the same time, at this point, it's like... He's, he's not going to catch up to Neo unless Neo dies. I mean... So he, he'd almost be better it... off playing it safe in the event that Neo does die. And... Because him taking it that obviously isn't going to help his case. But... Looks like he made it through the most dangerous stuff, so... He should be fine from here on out. Uh, I don't think uh, I think Neo is pretty much good from here on out. Uh... Yeah, Neo has plenty of height to make it around the corner here, get to the end, and realistically, the only th other thing that could possibly kill him is if he does letter skip. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh. So yeah, it looks like not a PB for either runner today, but Neo is not too far behind his. I think he'll be about a minute off. Mid 320s oh, times. His early dive scared the crap out of me. <laughs> it was very scared for Neo there. I never doubted him. And Neo make, will make his final ascent up this pole. Looking like a win in the bag with possibly a high 324. Yep. Clock in. Looked like a 324.53. Splitting a little late. Yeah, nice job to Neo. Uh, taking on the victory with a run about a minute off of his personal best. Always. Pretty good for a category this long to be a minute off your PB is yeah definitely commendable. And Danger is really not too far behind him as well. Yeah, oh. this was this was an emo this was an emotional journey. There weren't really many major mistakes made by either runner. Danger's had like his little rough patch in 
like the Moon Kingdom, and then like the very early parts of the post game. But outside of those two things, the Danger's hitting us with the thank you. The thank you for playing, thank you for watching, joining us on this lovely darker side race today. Smiley face. Yeah, um, just looking at our bracket moving forward here as Dangerous finishes up. Just climb up the fake New Donk City Hall. Neo is going to advance in the winner bracket to the winner semifinals to match up with Bayleaf, the world record holder of Darker Side. So he's got his work cut out for him there. And Dangers, reminder, this is a double elimination tournament, so he is not eliminated entirely yet. He will drop down to play the winner of Miwi and Pelocus Route, which has yet to happen yet. I don't think that match is scheduled yet. Should be within the next week or so, I believe. So he'll find out his next opponent soon. Move on to yeah, that would be the third round of the losers bracket and fourth round of the winners bracket. Oh, that was that was that was an experience. I don't, I don't know. I I feel, I do feel bad for how much the game was just not having fun with or not, not having fun. What just it did not have dangers back. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, he was he finished less than two minutes behind Neo and like. Almost 30 seconds of that alone was uh, Snowfish. And then the Chain Chomp Rock was fourth try, which is maybe well, another, what, 15 in seconds? In fairness, so was Neo's. Oh, was it? Yeah, they both got fourth try. Oh, okay. So yeah, balancing out a little bit there at least. But yeah, Neo had really good fish luck in general. Um, Danger's not so much, but... Yeah, as far as actual gameplay-wise, Danger's really not far behind that whole race. Um, I think more or less lived up to what we could expect. Get you know, mid 320s times is a pretty good show of consistency when your PB is in mid 320s, so good showing from both runners today. Yeah, I don't know if any of them are gonna I don't think we'll Did get we a confirmation any... on interviews with this one. I don't think we'll have any interviews today. Um... I mean, uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> if there's no interview, then I mean, it's yeah, much good to I go, see. I guess. I suppose so. Um, I don't know what else is going on in the speed gaming world today, but I'm sure. There's something lovely for you guys to watch after this race. But yeah, thanks for joining us today for Darker Side, best category. And there will be more matches to come. We'll see you guys next time. Wait, wait, hang on. Oh, okay. Uh, Neo's saying he's trying to, but he can't get it working. I don't, know, I don't know if he can get it working or not. I don't want to like stall up or anything if there's something else coming on. Yeah. All right. I think we're just gonna call it a day. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. For more speedrunning action on any of the speed gaming channels, we'll see you guys later.